evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, welcome to the stream, I hope you're doing well. Okay, what the heck has happened with my camera? I don't know what's happened there. Hope you're doing well, anyway, welcome to the stream. happened one second while I fix this hope we're doing all well anyway good evening Mariner hope you're doing well buddy looking forward to this flight today it should be a lot of fun Steve welcome to the chat good to see you brother There we are, nice and faded, beautiful stuff. Okay, welcome everybody, I hope we're doing well. So today, it's gonna be a fun one today. It's gonna be a fun one. <laughs> You're gonna be seeing me sweat a little bit, I think. Uh, we're gonna be flying the PMDG McDonnell Douglas DC-6 and uh, we're gonna be flying a couple of flights today. So starting off in uh, Malmö in Sweden. We're then going to be flying to the west, uh, well, northwest, up to uh, Bergen in Norway, and then on to Trondheim. So, we're going to be using live time weather. It looks like the sun has set here in uh, Malmö at the moment, but uh, what I'm hoping is that uh, as we fly to the west, we might be able to catch the sun up. Although this aircraft is not the fastest in the world, so maybe we don't, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I might make it brighter as we go on. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a very complicated aircraft, so you're definitely going to see me out a little bit out of my comfort zone here. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a learning experience, I think. And I'm going to try and, you know, I've done a few flights in it already, admittedly just following the tutorials, so I've kind of had my, held, my hand held. This will be the first time I'm sort of doing a flight that I've planned myself using DC-6. So it should be uh, very interesting to say the least and uh, I feel like I'm ready for it but um, <laughs> some things may not go as planned so we'll have to see what happens and I think for this first flight I don't know if you guys are aware or not but um, well I'll, I'll go, come to that I'll come to that momentarily but uh, nevertheless nevertheless I'll tell you what we'll do first of all is we are just going to just prepare this prepare this shot for you guys before before I reveal reveal the beast I tell you what I am gonna make it a little bit lighter here because it is it is getting pretty dark there we go we're getting absolutely banging sunset going on here all right let's do this thing guys all right so welcome <laughs> Welcome back guys, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So uh, here we are, we're at uh, Malmö Airport. As you can see there, that is apparently how you pronounce it, or the, although I could be butchering that. I realise in English that just reads as Malmö. Um, but uh, with the umlaut on the end there, I believe it reads a little bit different, but uh, nevertheless, uh, welcome to Malmö. This is a, or Malmö, this is a uh, Orbex airport. Uh, it's actually developed by uh, a developer called Marcus. Um, Marcus, uh, I have actually forgotten his name off, off the top of my head. Marcus, uh, second name begins with an N, I believe. And it's very nice, very nicely done. I mean, the window textures aren't opaque, but that's fine. They are extremely high resolution, and yeah, it just it just looks good. It's a super cool airport. Even though I do already own Copenhagen, which is literally just across the uh, across the water there, so it's literally like a 10-minute flight <laughs> to Copenhagen from here, and that's one of my favourite airports, and it's super close to this. But um, nevertheless. This is such a unique airport, I, I kind of had to get it, it's, just look at it. Oh, look, we've got another, we've got another. I assume that's probably Mariner, is that you? Who's parked up next to me? Look, it even shows your uh, stairs and stuff, that's super cool. 
Yeah, so this is Malmer. We're just having a quick wander across the apron here. Don't worry about it. We've got a high vis on. So we're having a quick look around. And uh, yeah, it's just a super unique airport with this yellow exterior. I just thought it was a really, really interesting one to look at. Let's just let's just uh, put our wings on for a second and have a quick look around. So yeah, as you can see, it's super, super unique looking. Very, very yellow and very, very cool. I absolutely love it, to be honest. I suppose this is like a bit like Marmite, this airport, I suppose but it's very cool. This is the single passenger terminal here that we're looking at in front of us. And then over here you've got um, cargo and uh, well, more cargo in the back there. So all the way over there you've got some more cargo. You can see there's a load of statics over there. And uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. It's a very cool airport. I highly recommend looking into it if you are looking for an airport in Sweden that's in a relatively central location. It's not far from Stockholm. It's not far from Copenhagen it's not far from Gothenburg and it's relatively close to our destination today which is uh, Bergen filthy badger welcome to the chat on twitch I hope you do well good to see you mate good to see you uh, Mariner's not ready to help me <laughs> well that's all good mate that's all good I mean we're just gonna have to struggle through it together and uh, yeah fingers crossed Hope and pray, hope and pray. At least I, I'm, I'm going to fly with engine damage and stuff off. So, um, yeah, at least, you know, we can't, you know, blow up our engines or anything when switching over. Well, actually, I was I was swatting up. I was studying on the uh, studying the supercharges and stuff and when you'd have to use that. Um, but my flight plan's only calling for flight level 120. So we won't even need to use the supercharges, I don't think. <laughs> that is you. Great stuff. Awesome, dude. Um, Bo says, nice. My dad flew the DC-6 for Sterling Airways. That is so, so cool, dude. Amazing, man. Amazing. All right, then, guys. So let's have a quick look around this beautiful, beautiful bird here. So as you can see here, we've got the uh, sort of engineer's stairs up to the engines here as uh, obviously they've just been taking a look at it before the flight today so you've got the oil pans in place there as well and uh, I believe uh, we've got a little ground power unit here a little diddy one and uh, a little hand well not a hand tug but a little tiny little tug unfortunately that's not operational I wish it was um, but it doesn't appear to be and apparently there's some pitot covers as well but I I'm yet to actually locate where the pitot tubes are on this aircraft. This isn't it, is it? No, that doesn't look like it, does it? I'm not sure what that is. That's a bit weird. Don't use brakes for pushback. <laughs> I'll try not to make, yeah, we had a little bit of a blunder the other day, didn't we? Yeah, that's a point actually. I'm not sure where the uh, the pito uh, tubes are. Interesting, we'll have to see if we can see any difference when we take them off. But yeah, as you can see, very, very nicely modeled <laughs> aircraft. Absolutely love the modeling. If I had to give any criticisms to this aircraft is they could probably have done a bit of a better job on the texturing. Um, like if you compare it to the default aircraft, the texturing is is not as good. Um, although it is still fairly good. But you can see here, if you look at these rivet lines and stuff, um, and the metal sheets where they join and, and whatnot, it's a little bit low res. And I know in Microsoft Flight Simulator you can do that you can do that stuff without really any performance impact, so I would have thought they'd have done that, but um, nevertheless, it's fine. Also, the windows, when you're looking on the drone cam, they don't have any glass in them, <laughs> which is a bit strange. And this, this rear window, now, that just looks awful to me. <laughs> These It looks like they've got the curtains drawn or whatever, but it just looks terrible, so I think they could have done better there or just left it out completely. 
Um, but here we are, this is a DC-6 anyway, other than those minor criticisms, it is an absolutely stunning aircraft. The cockpit is, is just brilliant, which we'll look at momentarily. Uh, we'll just have a quick browse on, on, the, on the cabin here and just have a quick look around. <laughs> so you've got a cabin in this thing, it's, um, it's pretty basic, um, but that's fine, I don't really mind about that. Um, you know, it's okay. Pretty low res, pretty low poly, but I'm not, not too bothered. I kind of just like seeing it because it does give a bit of a feeling of that kind of era of aviation. You know, you've got these kind of very old school fabrics and color palettes going on with this weird kind of cyan and blue. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the cabin. Um, I'm not going to pay too much attention there. Let's uh, let's jump out here and uh, let's go back underneath. Let's live life on the edge here. Oof. And then we'll come round in to the cabin. And we are just going to do that. And here we are. Boom. In fact, I'm not going to do that. I am just going to switch cameras here. So and have that camera on for takeoff. And then we're just going to go like this. There we go, here we are. <laughs> We're in the cabin now, beautiful stuff. And I can't move for some reason, why is that? Oh dear, that's uh, that's a bit strange. Let me just switch cameras again. Okay, something's weird here. <laughs> uh, David, thank you very much for the subscription on YouTube. Hope you're well and having a great week. Welcome to the stream. Also, Thoris as well. Hope you both are well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're both having a fantastic day. Let's just see here. Okay, so my keys are still bound here. So what is going on then? Why what? It won't let me... It won't let me move the camera. It'll only let me move it right. Uh, sorry, to the left and backwards. Rather than forwards and to the right. That is extremely weird. Let me just cycle through some of my cameras here and see if it fixes itself. Okay, I can move forwards now, but not backwards and to the right. I mean, I can do it with my controller. Maybe it's maybe it's conflicting. I don't know. Let's uh, let me just remove that real quick, um, and then we'll we'll continue on. So let me just go camera cockpit i'm just going to remove these bindings that i made yesterday all right hopefully that works beautiful okay great stuff so here we are in the uh the flight deck beautiful flight deck absolutely very well done love this uh shelf here with all the bits and bats on We've even got a uh a safety card here for the DC-6, which is uh, quite cool. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? We've got some Beeman's. Uh, Pepsin gun. Pepsin gum. Yeah. Old school by the looks of things. And then you've got a few manuals. Uh, obviously, we're going to be needing those today. Uh, we've even got a little jump seat here. Beautiful. Love to see it. <laughs> Raven Gaming, good evening, bro. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. And uh, Adam, welcome to the chat, brother. Good to see you, man. All right. Cool. Oh, look at that through the window on top. Beautiful. All right, yeah. So here we are in the cabin. Um, bunch of circuit breakers here. These all do actually work and are modeled, so I don't want to accidentally click any of those. So I'm just going to move away from that section. And uh, we'll get ourselves seated here. All right, so let's have a quick look at our EFB to begin with. So this uh, aircraft has a bit of a, uh, well, we'll come to that in a sec. We'll just turn some lighting on first of all. So I'm gonna get the red lighting on. And uh, yeah, we need to get ground power on first, don't we? So <laughs> let's do that. Let's test that we have ground power, which we do. We can put this into ground power and turn it on. Beautiful. All right, so we've got a nice red lighting going on. 
<laughs> which is absolutely brilliant. Okay, so first things first, let's get some uh, some fuel on board. Uh, let's get self-loading cargo configured as well. I'm going to give this a try. I've just managed to find a profile for it. I'm not sure how good it's going to be, but we're going to try it. Uh, let's add a bit of time onto our departure here. So we'll aim to get going in about 20 minutes. Let's click start flight. Start flight there. Uh, okay, it thinks, yeah, all right, that's fine. We're going to get the boarding started. We don't have fuel on board yet, so we're going to leave the seatbelt signs off. And we're going to get fueled up here. So, what do we need for today? We need... Uh, uh, oh. We need a, a block fuel of 3905. Now, I've just realized I did my Simbri flight plan in kilograms, so I'm going to have to do a quick conversion here because this is all in pounds on the iPad. 3905. That is 8610 pounds. So we're going to go with. Uh, oh, what have I just done there? I think I've just loaded it up fully, haven't I? Uh, let's just go. Set fuel 50 so I don't have to scroll as far. And we are going to go for eight. God, this is this is a long process. I wish you could just type it in. Click to fill slash scroll to increments of one thousand pounds. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Oh, I'm not reading it right. Click to fill. Click to empty. Scroll for a thousand. Okay, that's that's great actually. That's actually a lot easier than I was making it. Now I've forgotten how much we needed because I've been faffing about. So we need eight, six, ten. That's eight, six, and eight, six, one, three will do. So we'll go for that. And now then, can we just set a zero fuel weight here or do we have to just actually set the payloads? Hmm, okay, we have to set uh, passengers and the baggage. So we are gonna have 68 passengers. We are gonna be full today. And the uh, cargo is, uh, is zero, so that should give us a payload of 7.1 tons. Now, again, I have done this in kilograms, so I just need to uh, 7.1 uh, tons. So 15.904 should be looking at. Mm, so that's not exactly right, is it? Um, see what's our gross weight here on our flight plan flight plan gross weight is three six three six four nine a zero but oh, we're gonna have to do a conversion again aren't i three six four nine a zero uh eight zero four four six oh man these weights are all over the shop Zero four four six. Okay, so I'm just going to empty this until we get to that figure. That should do it. Okay. I wonder what the passengers. Uh, I must need to fiddle with the sim brief profile. I think Mariner sent me one the other day, so I will. I'll have to dig that out. I completely forgot to add it. All right, great stuff. So that's the weight set. So we're looking good on that front. We've got all the passengers on board now. So let's uh, set the seatbelt signs which are up here. Now, I wonder if this connects with self-loading cargo. Let's try it. Okay, great. It does not. All right, we'll do it over there then anyway. That's fine. Okay, so for 
this aircraft, like I said, um, we do have a... Actually, no, we're going to come to that later on. <laughs> I keep forgetting the absolute basics here. I'm such a noob. Um, okay, so let's just power this, this guy on and this guy... All right, now we're gonna have to put in our flight plan. I forgot to put, I forgot to do it through the main menu, which I should have done really. Um, but we're gonna have to manually put it into this little device here, which is, um, it's a bit of a pain, but um, it was my mistake. So I'm just gonna get on with it. So, <laughs> uh, Nicola, good evening. Welcome to the chat, brother. I hope you're doing well. And I've just realized I forgot to do the mod as well. Great stuff. Uh, there's a great mod for this uh, GNS430, so um, I was going to put that on as well, which I completely forgot. So we're just going to put it in manually, and it's not, not hopefully not too painful. It's not a massively long flight plan, so we'll get on with it. So this is our uh, departure. ESMS uh, stood up uh, uh, Malmö. We're going to get this punched in here. And uh, I'm just going to have a sip of my uh, coffee. Yes, I am drinking coffee at 9.40 p.m. in the UK. Um, <laughs> I was feeling extremely... Um, well, I had a big meal this afternoon and a couple of beers. So I was flagging a little bit before the stream, let's say. All right. So we're going to go from... ESMS, which is our departure. We're going to use a departure procedure, which is going to be... Now, I, w I am going to continuously click the wrong thing using this device here because I'm really not used to them. <laughs> uh, we're going to be using the Ernav 1 Kilo departure, which is... Ernav 1 Kilo. Uh, transition is going to be non as far as I'm aware. Let's just see. There aren't actually there anyway. And it's automatically put runway 17 in for us, which is correct. So we'll enter that in. And we'll go back to our flight plan here. Let's click this middle one down. And this is what I always get wrong, and I completely muck it up. I accidentally... If you just scroll this middle knob by accident, instead of the outer knob, it just completely mucks up your whole flight plan. It's it's, it's quite triggering when you do it, because I, I have no idea. It seems like a very strange design. Anyway, uh, let's carry on. Now, we've got two Ernovs in there. I'm not sure if that's going to cause us a problem or not. Again, I'm not that used to this GPS. We will see. Um, fingers crossed it doesn't. And then from Ernov, we are going to take an airway. Now, um, question is, how the frig do I put an airway into this thing? That is a very good question. I actually don't know. Um, let's just try. We'll start putting in the waypoint, which is going to be AMSEV. And maybe it will figure out that there is a way, uh, an airway between the two waypoints. We shall see. So AMSEV, do, do, do. AMSEV, Echo November. Now, I'm not sure what that Echo November is denoting. Let me just check this against my actual flight plan. So AMSEV. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, maybe it's the leg type. Maybe it's en route, yeah. Maybe it's just saying en route. I don't know. Um, let's just enter it in, see what it does. Okay. Now, if I go back to this waypoint and click menu, is it going to let me put in an airway? It doesn't. Um, procedures is not going to be the one, is it? I'm not sure if you can even use airways on this.
put that back to GPS before I forget to do it. All right, anyway, let's continue on. Amsev. So from Amsev, we're going to go to Badap, and then we're going to go on our arrival. So it's, yeah, it's a pretty short flight, flight plan, so not a big deal. And then it's going to be Badap. B-A-D-A-P. Where's P? I swear I know my alphabet, guys. I swear. Wait. Is it because... Oh, it's bad ab. It's because um, P doesn't... It's not... Yeah, it's only showing the letters that it could be. So, bad ab. <laughs> It's because the arrival is a bad app to Papa. I'm just seeing the P on the end. Okay, great stuff. So that's that in. Uh, let's then go to procedures and add in a arrival procedure. We're going to add that in and our arrival is going to be... Okay, I need to put my arrival airport in first, don't I? So we're going to put in ENBR, which is Bergen Airport. ENBR. And we're going to be doing this flight on VATSIM, guys. <laughs> I'm attempting it on VATSIM. I don't think there's, we're really going to run into too many controllers, to be quite honest. But um, yeah, we're going to do it on VATSIM. If I have to disconnect because things go pear-shaped, that's fine. And uh, we'll just do that. But there we go. We've got our flight plan in now. 415 cumulative miles. So on our flight plan, it is saying uh, 440. So it's relatively similar. Um, we haven't added in our procedures yet, though. So let's do that. And we're going to add in an arrival first. And we're going to add in the Badap to Papa. Transition. We're not using a transition. And then the runway is 35. So that's correct. Let's load that in. And then we're also going to load in an approach procedure. And we're going to use the ILS for runway 35. And that is going to be, I believe, the ILS Whiskey, I think, is what I chose. ILS Whiskey, yep, yeah, because that actually leads off nicely from our flight plan uh, via Godhead. So let's enter that. And then, uh, oh, okay. Um, different transitions on this one. ILS Whiskey. Oh, I'll tell you why that is. It's because, uh, let's just enter that. And then we're going to go back up here. And change this because I put the wrong runway in, didn't I? So it's ILS 35 whiskey. And then got it. Beautiful stuff. Okay, let's load that in. We're not going to activate it. And that should be our flight plan done. So let's just check this and make sure it all looks good. So let's go from the top. Departure earn of one kilo. Uh, going out to MS651 and then to Venom. Then out to Babsy and then Ernov. That's looking good. Uh, we know that's correct. Now, I'm not sure exactly, again, whether these airways have linked up properly, but I will just check that uh, in just a second. I'm not exactly sure the best way to do that, but I'm, I'm going to try it. Our arrival is Badap to Papa, and that is going to bring us in from uh, Badap, first of all. Octos. Uh, Dip Dibma, Legta, Latsi, BR seven three five, Ratug, BR seven oh. Ratug. Ha. Huh. Oh, okay. I think it's because our approach procedure is transitioning off this so let's just 
see here. Our first waypoint is goaded. Oh, that's weird. It seems to have missed out two waypoints. So from Ratug, there should be BR732 and then BR731. And that should go then to go 730 as well and then to goaded. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna just check on that in a second. Uh, Idava. All right. And then these are the, that's the final approach fix there. Cool. Okay, great stuff. So that's sort of looking okay. I'm just gonna use the VFR map because the map in this is basically just the same thing. It just looks more convoluted. So I'm just going to check this looks okay for our en route section here. Now, I don't really have any way of seeing the wet airways on here. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and see if it works out. And then for next next flight, I will just have to see if there's a way to do the way, uh, the airways and things like that. Yeah, I mean, it looks about correct. Just eyeballing it. Yeah, we'll have to see how much it matches up to Navigraph, but it looks about right. So let's just check in here. So from, uh, yeah, so there should be like a bit of a loop down this way here. And it hasn't seemed to add that in. Now, this is a default little device here. So, to be quite honest, I don't want to try and mess with it and spend forever trying to figure out how to insert a waypoint. So, I'm going to just leave that and we're going to just crack on with that. All right, cool. So, that's the flight plan in. That's good. Run GPS. Uh, we don't really need to worry too much about the uh, VLOC frequency for now. However, for the radio, we are going to choose one, two, two decimal eight because we are on VATSIM. I'm going to switch that into the active frequency. And uh, let's just see here. Two minutes to depart according to SimTool, uh, according to self loading cargo. So our passengers are going to get a bit upset with us soon. All right, Malna traffic, radio check. It is getting a bit dark here, isn't it? I might have to wind the time back again. I want to, I want to have at least a bit of daytime, you know. So if we go live now, it's almost pitch black. So, but at least for this first flight, I want to try and have a bit of daylight. So we're going to do that. I'm not hearing anyone respond on the radios. Malmo traffic, radio check. Mariner, are you there? <laughs> so we've got Mariner just over there. You can just see him just behind the door. That's him. Thought he was on um, Vatsim. Well, he is on Vatsim. I'm not sure. Maybe he's not got his radio tuned yet. Anyways, guys, let's um, let's start getting things rocking here. So, what we're going to do for this first flight is we're going to actually use the artificial flight engineer to help us out with some of the checklists. Now, I want to do this with the first flight just to get us rocking because uh, it is the first time I've flown this on stream. Uh, but for the second flight, I think I'm going to try and do some of the uh, checklists myself. However, as you guys may well have noticed, there is an absolute shit ton of dials, switches, knobs and levers in here. So, um, yeah, I mean, everything is simulated here, so it's going to be 
if I put one wrong, then I'm going to be scratching my head forever. So for the first flight, I'm just going to just going to get on with it. So let's turn the music down a little bit so you guys can hear what happens here. If you've not seen this aircraft yet, this is pretty cool. So if I click before start, the flight engineer is going to start doing the before start check. So if you, I'm just going to shut up here so you guys can hear. Try to find what switches he's touching. <laughs> I didn't actually see what he did. Oil coolers and cow flaps. Hold position. Fuel and fluids. So I did the cow flaps. Checked. Pressurization. Pressurization Sit. is up here. Manifold and duct pressure. Checked. Radios. Radios. I can hear the radio is moving. Look, he's moving them, but <laughs> they're already on. Oh, and he's, he's closing the doors now. <laughs> Ladder's going up. He's got rid of the uh, stairs out there as well. This door's this um is going to close as well. Closed. Door warning lights. Out. Gear pins. Removed. Three on board. Seat belts and pedals. Adjusted. Throttles. Sit to idle. Propellers. Forward and three. Set the throttles to idle position there. Bring in a mixture up for complete. engine three. Start engines. All right, so now we are ready to start the engines. He's very, very kindly done everything for us pretty much. Let's just check our transponder code. Because he's not going to do that for us. Now, transponder code on VATSIM without a um, without a squawk, I believe it's 2000. Someone please correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure it's 2000. 1200, I think. Or what? What was it on before? It was on 1,200, wasn't it? I believe that's for the US, so I think for Europe it's 2,000. We're going to stick it on anyway. Because uh, we're about to, well, we'll leave it on, just on, on mode for now, not, not alt. And we're going to start the engines. So, I'll tell you what we're going to do is, we're going to open our windows for this. <laughs> For some reason, that registered as the doors closing on self-loading cargo, which was very strange. But we're going to start the engines here on stand. Hi, That's absolutely fine to do in this aircraft. So we've got, first of all, we've got our mixture to auto-rich on engine three. We're going to start with engine three. And we are going to come up here. So you can see the automated flight. The artificial flight engineer has already put our main, main fuel booster pump to low. Um, he's also put the engine mode selected to three and the ignition to both. And all we need to do is just use these in the middle here to get it started up. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome aboard the aircraft. My name's Steve. I'm your pilot this evening, uh, along with first officer David and your senior flight attendant. All right, Obama, mate. You with the rest of the crew, will you know. be making our way around the cabin. Make sure you're comfortable and ready to get us on our way. We're not actually anticipating any delays, so we should be arriving on time at our destination. The guys on the ground have just I'm finished just gonna, the final bits of luggage into the aircraft, so we should be on our way very shortly. I'm just going to turn that guy off. We are just waiting to receive pushback. I don't think I can stop it once it's already started, uh, though, so... we can start moving towards the runway. But if you could help the cabin crew by getting yourself so comfortable... Okay, cool. Let's do this thing. Anyway, uh, I'm going to wait for this guy to finish doing uh, this announcement before, we'll so we can hear... But for now, I'd like to thank you for tuning to fly with us today. And I hope you enjoy the flight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's do this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to press this starter down. This is going to hold the safety and the starter at the same time. Now, in the real aircraft, you would hold these both at the same time. Uh, but obviously, in the sim, you only have to you only have to click it once. And then we're going to click boost and then prime after the flight engineer counts to 12 blades. So um, he's obviously counting the propeller spinning round. And once he's used 12 blades, then we're going to hit the boost and hit the prime. And that's going to fire it up, hopefully. 
So here we go, guys. Wish me luck. Damiana, good afternoon. Welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Happy Father's Day to you too. <laughs> Much love. All right. Let's get this thing rolling then. So. Three. Six. Nine. Twelve. Boost and then prime. There she blows. <laughs> there she blows. All right, we got one going. Beautiful. Mariner's over there, give him a wave. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of vibration coming through the uh, cabin here. I heard a couple of buttons just click. And I didn't do anything there. Oh, it was these guys. Um... Okay, cool. So, let's jump up back top got four of these to do guys so I hope you're strapped in and ready uh, we're gonna put this boost pump off now and uh, we're gonna put this selector to engine four we are then going to jump below let's get the engine four mixture to auto rich we're gonna come back up top and we are going to set the boost pump for engine 4 to low we're then going to put the ignition to both on engine 4 magneto and here we go again Three. here he goes Six. Nine. that's nicely synced up as well Come isn't on. it boost and then prime beautiful There we go. Fantastic stuff. Let's get that booster pump. Uh, actually, we'll leave that on for a second until these guys click off. I'm just going to jump down here and do... Uh, we're going to do engine one next. All right, so they're all off. Let's put this booster pump back to off. We're going to do engine one. So engine mode selected to one. Magneto to both, and uh, let's poke our head out the other window now. Three, six, five, twelve. Oh, wrong camera, there we go. Oh, beautiful, we got it going. Hey, welcome. Welcome everybody from uh, Fun Mouth Stream. Welcome guys, hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for the raid button mouth. I hope you had a good stream, dudes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just getting the engine started here in the DC6. Absolutely brilliant time to uh, to join. All right, so last engine then. So we're going to get uh, the booster pumps off, first of all. Excuse me. We'll jump on down below and get the mixture to uh, auto reach on engine 2. Engine mode selected to 2. Main fuel boost bump to low on engine 2. And the ignition to both. Let's go again. Oh, it's beautiful. There she goes. There she goes. Four good engine starts, guys. Well, should be four good engine starts in a second. All right, yeah. Now RPMs are coming up. Let's just let that stabilize. And then we're going to bring the throttles back because we're sitting right in this uh, RPM range here, which is uh, basically it's, it's what's called the... Um, harmonization range of these engines so that's why the uh, the instrument panel here is vibrating so much so we're going to just pull the throttles back a bit and we're going to leave them at uh, 1000 rpm so they warm up nicely there we go Engine 2 is still building up its RPM a little bit by, by the looks of things. Yeah, 
Okay, cool. And as you can see here, looking at the engine instruments, we've got uh, our fuel temperature building up here. Well, these these two look like the stabilized more or less. You can see engine two is still catching up a bit on the sorry the oil temperature. Um, just making a note here, it's 20 degrees outside here in Norway, so pretty toasty. Um, everything else looks pretty good. Uh, fuel pressure, oil pressure. Yeah, we're looking pretty sweet here. So I'm going to just turn the volume down a touch now that we've got everything going. It's getting a bit loud. All right. Uh, we did thanks. Didn't think you were playing Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, but this is a new aircraft I heard about recently. Yes, it is, dude. Yeah, this just came out on Friday. Uh, super detailed. Yes, it is indeed. Yeah, it's very, very detailed. Well, it's PMDG, so, you know, they've really done every aspect here. Okay, so I thought I opened that window, but I didn't. It must have just been this one. So let's just close that one and latch it up there. Wait. Why did it just get louder when I opened that? Oh dear. I saw someone else have this issue on a stream and it totally messed up the pressurization in the aircraft. Ha. <laughs> um right. Mm, that's a bit annoying. I'll tell you what I should have already done now is put the plane battery on while we're starting those engines there. All right, let me just see if I can fix this then. So maybe if I... No, it's not like gonna let me open those while the engines are running, I guess. So... Mm, that's very annoying. Why has it done that? <laughs> maybe if we just unlatch it. Like that. You guys can hear how what the difference in volume is when I do that, right? If I just leave it unlatched like that, it should be okay. I'm just going to ignore the fact that it's open for the flights, and hopefully all is well. All right, that's a bit of a weird one. Um, I actually saw that on the Flying Fabio stream. Um, before it released, actually, so I'm surprised they've not done anything about that. It's quite unfortunate, really. All right, anyway, let's get the... Uh, Fly engineer to run the after start checks. Start selected, bus bumps. Off and off. Battery switch. Plane benching. Generators and inverters. Check and on. Emergency lights. Bombed. Ground power. Removed. After start checks complete. Great stuff. So, after start checks are completed. Got 13% satisfaction. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, Malmö traffic. Uh, Scandinavian 452. Pushing back stand 9er. Malmö traffic. Let's see, has, um, has Mariner got his engine started? I think he does. He does, yeah. <laughs> the sound on it is uh, so so dramatically different to this aircraft. Okay, cool. So let's do this. We're not actually going to push back here. We're literally just going to um, we're literally just going to use reverse thrust. Oh, baby, stop it! <laughs> we're just going to use reverse thrust and reverse out here, which is fine. fine in this aircraft. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Beautiful. <laughs> let's just put them back to more or less idle.
getting into that synchronization range. Let's just give it a little bit more juice here. Why does it not want to go back anymore? Come on, dude. Oh, like the nose wheel got stuck. That's weird. Come on, what the heck? Okay. This is quite embarrassing, actually. This is literally the most issues I've had so far with the aircraft. I'm moving my rudder pedals. There we go. Okay, just needed a ridiculous amount of power to start moving. <laughs> Wow, 30 inches of manifold pressure and this is how slow it's going. Marmo traffic, KLM 100, uh, reversing out from stand five. Marmo traffic. What has happened? What's going on? <laughs> Depressingly bad. What is going on? Okay, fuck it. We're just gonna leave it there and uh, we're just gonna taxi out from here. Hopefully, there aren't any issues. I'm actually moving forwards. Okay, so let's just check the lighting situation overhead. Uh, we've got our beacon light on. Let's put our well, position lights can stay steady for now, and everything else is okay. There's really not many lights on this thing. No strobe lights or anything. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's go. Let's get going forwards then. PMDG quality. PMDG quality. Yeah, it's very strange actually. Yeah, literally the first first time I've had any issues like that. Really, it's um, yeah, it's a bit embarrassing for PMDG really. Okay, so we want runway 17, so we're going to taxi to the left here. And I should really mention this on... Did the window just snap shut there? On the traffic, so that's Scandinavian 452, taxi to runway 17 via Yankee. It's uh, Malmo traffic. I just realized I haven't done any kind of uh, departure briefing or anything for you guys. So we'll do that uh, very quickly before we take off here. And uh, listen to this guys as I add some brakes. Listen to squeaky brakes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Still need to map my tiller on the uh, nose wheel in this aircraft. Okay. Marmo cool. traffic, KLM 100, taxi, runway 17 via Charlie and Yankee. Uh, Marmo traffic. Oh! oh I'm just, uh, my nose has just crept over a little bit there, but I think that's acceptable. Okie dokie, so before we get underway here, well, let's just bring up the, uh, the fuzz pad and uh, we'll have a quick look at our departure briefing. Um, before I forget, I'm going to put a transponder to uh, Charlie. And uh, yeah, so uh, we've already taxied out, don't need to worry too much about that. We were parked here, so we literally just went Charlie, Yankee, there we go. Boom, runway 17, 2,800 meters. Great stuff. All right, so our departure is going to be out to the south. We're going to take a right turn. Um, doesn't say any kind of mileage on this, uh, but once we reach this fix and take take a right, we're going to be earn of one kilo, as uh, we said earlier on. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's an RNAV departure, so you need to follow the RNAV fixes. So that's fine. We're going to take a right turn out to Venom, max 210 knots. That's not really going to be an issue for us. Minimum 1,000 feet. Again, not too much of an issue. 
um, then out to Babsy Ernolf. Very, very simple departure, so nothing too much to worry about. We're going to climb up to 12,000 feet. That is going to be our cruising altitude. It's, I mean, for a two hour flight, just under, that is a low cruising altitude. <laughs> Simbrief gave me it. It's, uh, yeah, very interesting. We'll see how that pans out anyway. So uh, let's run our before takeoff checks. Boost pumps. Setting the boost pumps boost here. Pumps on low. Fuel selector and cross feed. Checking the fuel fuel. selectors and cross feeds. Checking the autopilot here. Car peats down here. System. Fuel down. hydraulics. Forward. Pressure and quantity checked. Okay. Flaps 20. Flaps down here. Look at this uh, flaps lever. Platypus, the platypus tail. <laughs> flaps set to 20. Windows of turbine. Let's see. Did the window actually close here? Yeah, I think the window actually snapped itself Close shut. On. Controls. Oh no, that's not worked, has Gas it? Released. That's Three. not worked. We're just gonna leave it like that. Pito Checking the pito heat, which Reach is uh, right here. Reach unlocked. Set. Transponder. On. Landing lights. Oh, he does actually set the transponder for you. That's that's nice. Turning the landing lights on. You should see them retracting down here. There you go. Boom. There's Mariner behind us, let's not leave him waiting too long. Oh my god guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> my apologies, my apologies. Right, okay, my stream is lagging a bit, what the heck. Let it catch up here. Uh, let's see. Hello. This camera is the second camera is not responding to anything. It's just my hand is just still. I'm moving my hand. Look at this. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, there we go. Has it just decided to catch up? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, hey, there we go. We're in. We're in business. We're in business. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. Let's get going. Malmere traffic. Scandinavian 452 lining up runway 17. Malmere traffic. All right. So packet brake is released. Let's go. Yeah, sorry about the screen there, guys. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> I'm going to make it a bit brighter just for the takeoff. And definitely didn't mean to do that right there. Look at the angle of this wheel, right? It's... Anyway, I need to look forwards right now <laughs> okie dokie uh, we're just getting into that synchronization range let's just drop the power a bit here uh, I don't want to eat up too much of the runway lining up here but uh, that's going to have to do it alright let's hold the tow brakes Malmo traffic, Scandinavian 452, runway 17, taking off Malmo traffic. Okay, let's do this. So we can even get the uh, artificial flight engineer to do the uh, takeoff power settings for us. So it's kind of like, a, traffic, kind of like an auto behind the departing DC6, um, line up runway 17, uh, Malmo guys, traffic. That guy you hear on the radios as well is Mariner Halley. He's another streamer here 
on Facebook. He does actually stream on Twitch as well, guys, so uh, feel free to go drop him a follow. Absolute uh, sound sound guy, so uh, very good streaming. All right, let's uh, let's get going. Anyway, take off dry. So now the artificial flight engineer is adding 30 inches of manifold pressure here. I'll turn up the volume for you guys so you can hear the takeoff. There you go. 30 inches stabilized. You should call it. 30 inches stabilized. Cal okay. flaps. Cal flaps. Cal flaps set. Set the cal flaps. Full power, full. please. Full power. Right, full power. It's 45 inches full power, right here. No, oh, <laughs> it's 50 inches, or 50, 54, 53. There we go, 53. <laughs> full power set. Full power set. Let's do this. You'll notice I'm not reaching for my uh, throttle at all because that'll just interfere with this guy. All right, so we're going to rotate at 100 knots. Keeping us on that center line there. Or trying to anyway. There we go, it's 100 knots. Let's pull back a tiny bit. Not, that was maybe a little bit aggressive, but there we go. Just a very, very slight pitch up we need for this Monster aircraft. Gear up. Gear selected up. So he's going to put the gear up for us now. Let's see going up there. Beautiful stuff. Let's just hold this. Let's pitch for 130 knots. So 500 feet above ground level, roughly, I think. Uh, we're going to pitch forward for 140 knots now. Flaps up. Flaps going up. He's putting the flaps up for us as well, so we'll probably need to do a little bit of a pitch down here. Sorry, pitch up. Alright, so I'm just going to fly it manually until we uh, until he gets set into climb power here. I'm going to take that right turn. He's setting uh, Mito power now, so you can hear the engines rolling back. I'm going to go for about 25 degrees of bank here. Mito power set. Climb power. City climb power. Setting climb power now, so I'm going to pitch the nose down a little bit. Still turning into intercept our GPS routing. There we go, we want 165 knots for the climb, which is about here, so I'm going to pitch up and trim that out. Oh, the speed just suddenly dropped down there, let's just... pitch up there. Alright, speed's building nicely there. We're intercepting our GPS course here, so I'm just going to turn into left, so we're on that. Malmo traffic, KLM 100, taking off runway 17. Uh, Malmo traffic. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so we needed to be above 1,000 feet at this first waypoint that we're coming up to, which we are, so no issues there. I'm just going to keep flying it manually here for a minute until we get settled on 165 knots, which is right there. So now we are going to stick in the gyro pilot, which is basically the autopilot in this thing. So we're going to stick gyro pilot on. Um, sorry, we're going to turn it to gyro pilot mode, gyro pilot on, and then we're going to engage the mechanical disconnect. I'm going to turn this straight to localizer, and that should then start turning us in towards our magenta line. And I'm going to just make sure that it trims us down a bit because we're losing a bit of speed here. Definitely pitched up a bit too high. 
Whilst I looked away there, we lost a bit of a bunch of speed. I'm just going to very, very gently pitch this down. Not doing anything too quickly here. Um, but as you can see, if I jump up here, it's not <laughs> it's not doing what we asked it to. So let's go back to Gyro Pilot and I'm going to roll it manually myself towards where we want to go. Let's keep lowering that trim down. Hopefully I haven't broken this thing. It doesn't seem to be turning for me. There we go. Come on. <laughs> there we go. It, it hasn't behaved like... Okay. So it's disconnected itself for some reason. Let's try that again. Alright, so here's Venom anyway. Let's try and get it. We're at 165 knots now, so that's fine. Uh, 100 and just over 110 feet per minute. Now, I'm not sure why it was it is disconnecting like that. It was doing this to me the other day. Very, very strange. Like, it's supposed to do that once you are getting in a very weird trim configuration. Which, as you can see, we are pretty much in a normal trim configuration. We've got a little bit of aileron, but that's because we're in a turn. So, I'm going to just continue flying it for a minute here. I'm just going to keep the trim where it is. And uh, let's get ourselves onto a bit of a straight, a bit more of a straight leg here, and, uh, and then I'll try and sort it out. So that's the fun of flying a DC-6. <laughs> let's see here, if I look down here, we can see our GPS, um, beam is being picked up on here so that's fine. We'll give it a little bit of trim up. Okay now let's go wings level and let's see if we can let's give it a little bit of trim down there and let's see if we can get this thing working again. So, gyro pilot on. Mechanical disconnect on. Now we'll go to localizer. That should then turn us onto our GPS course and hold our pitch, which looks like it's doing this time. So if we jump on over here, it is turning in towards this line, which is nice. Love to see it. A little bit over 165, but that's fine. Only got uh, 3,000 feet to go. We're looking good. Let's turn the volume down just a touch here. All right, nice and stabilized in the climb now. <laughs> we got it going in the end. Yeah, I still, I'm still yet to kind of work out the intricacies as to why this would disconnect on its own. But I did see this in the uh, forums the other day. And it's generally when you're out of trim and uh, something weird is going on and nothing really too out of the ordinary is going on there. So that's a bit confusing, but I'm sure I'll work it out in time and give it a little bit more of a pitch up. Very, very gentle. Yo, Ramsey, dude, welcome. Hope you're doing well, mate. Let's go back to the cruise camera. Thank you very much for 350 stars, dude. Absolute pleasure, as always, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Hope I have turned stress damage off from the in-game options. I have, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, as of late, I actually just keep those... I mean, I've had it permanently off now for maybe about two or three weeks, just because this sim will just crash some like you know it'll crash your aircraft for you know 
all sorts of unthinkable reasons. So, yeah. Okie dokie, so we're coming up to 11,000 feet here, so I'm going to actually just reduce our climb rate down. We'll go to about 500 feet per minute, and we'll get a nice level off here. Mike, welcome to the chat. Sorry, I missed your message a little bit earlier on. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Wayne says, Marina Halley sent me. Hey, welcome. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, hope you're well. Welcome to the chat. Uh, Yats2k as well. Thank you very much for the follow as well as Wayne. Thank you very much. Hope you're both well and having a fantastic week. Welcome to the stream. And uh, Mike, thank you very much for the 100 stars, dude. Much appreciated as always. Thank you very much. Very, very generous. Uh, we've got just under... 700 feet to go so let's start lowering our climb rate to about 250 feet per minute here gently gently slowly slowly that should do it right about there this is our vertical speed if you guys were wondering any decent wing views? Yeah, there's some 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 fairly decent ones. Yeah, I mean I've set a few up myself, such as this and this. This is kind of like out, out the uh, out the captain's window here. And then I will show you the wing views momentarily once we've leveled off. Yes, we're coming up to a level off here, so I don't want to just uh, yeah, I don't want to uh, miss the level off. Although, we're climbing quite slowly, let's just, uh... Yeah, so this is one I set up myself. Oh, look at this. You can see the spark in the engine. <laughs> this is one I set up myself as well. Uh, well, I set a few of myself. These are the ones that come default, this one here. Right here as well. These are default, these first six here. And then I set this one up myself. Hang on, let me just jump back inside here. All right, so approaching the level off here, and uh, we're just going to hit altitude hold once we just come up to 12,000 feet here. There we go. Just maybe a touch too early there, but that should do it more or less. Great stuff. So we're settled in here at our cruise altitude. We're going to now climb up to our cruising speed. So I'm going to leave takeoff power in for a short while here. We're turning left now at Babsy onto our on route waypoints, which is nice. Um, looking good. Let's see where we are in the world. Just cruising up the uh, west coast here of Sweden. Now, I haven't noticed these sparks going off in the engine before. I hope that's not due to thing I've done wrong. <laughs> Very strange. But I don't know. Maybe it's just it's a bit darker than when I've done the other flight. So over here, this is Copenhagen Airport right here. So I told you Malmo was close. We've come from about oh, I can't see it. It's too far away now I think. But we're off into the sun. Into the sun. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's see. Oil temperature is looking fine. Uh, let's see what else we've got. We've got uh, cylinder head temperatures. They're looking fine as well. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we've not... We have not got a fire developing, but it seems like we're okay. And uh, to be honest, we're not actually gaining that much more speed. Uh, we're at 40 inches, which is good and fine. And we're not really gaining any speed here. Uh, we're at 235 knots. Yeah, so it's a cruiser. I completely forgot to set my freaking <laughs> my... Um, altimeter which is probably no use setting it now so let's just set that to 1013 as we are <laughs> uh, now above the transition altitude and uh, yeah we'll have to do a bit more climb now 
That was a little bit of a noob mistake there, but hey ho. <laughs> Try to stream this thing and uh, remember everything for the first time. It's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Alright, so we're just going to do a very, very gentle climb up here to 12,000. And hopefully I can satisfy my OCD by getting this needle right under zero. Here we go. And there. Come on. Come on. Stop. Settle down now. Oh dear. That's shot straight past it, hasn't it? And it's still climbing. What? <laughs> what? Um, hello? Are you going to go to zero for me? Please? That's quite annoying, actually. All right, we go down. Let's just slip it down just very slightly here. That was weird. <laughs> Again, not, not something I've ever had happen before in this aircraft. I've done quite a few flights in this. Not had that happen before. Okay, let's have a quick look here at our temperatures. Everything looks good. And then coming down here, let's see what our outside air temperature is. I mean, it's zero degrees. So we want to just be, be careful of any clouds in case of icing. Let's turn altitude control back on. Let's hopefully... Why is it doing this thing where it's swinging up like crazy? This is a little bit disappointing, actually. What is it doing? It's just getting itself stuck in a climb. See, if I just give it a little bit of a nudge forward like that, is that going to... Uh, I mean, it's more or less zero. It's not perfectly at zero like it has been on my other flights, but <laughs> it's so weird. I freaking we descended and then I pressed level off and then we gained 150 feet. That's weird. That's it's kind of bugging me actually. <laughs> Tell you what I'm gonna do is let's just go. Let's just set it to do a very very small descent. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ignore the altitude control and just manually trim it out. I think. Anyway, on our way. Look at this absolute beauty. Oh yes, look at those propellers. <laughs> A bit of a nose down attitude here, don't we? Right. Oh, we are descending, that's why. <laughs> but um, that is quite a, a nose down for a, such a shallow descent. <laughs> it's the QNH. QNH is uh, 1013. Uh, it's a standard altimeter, basically, at this altitude. Because I set the altimeter late, it shouldn't be. I mean, I suppose it could be. But it shouldn't be because, uh, you know, on the on the descent, you would do the same. You know, you would set the altimeter on your way down as well when you pass through the transition level. And you know, 
it should still it should still work fine it's like i said i mean i've not had any issues with with the altitude hold being funky on any of my other flights it's, it's very strange actually all right so here's some custom views i set myself this one right here this one here i'm really not sure what's going on in here <laughs> this one here which is just sunning in this light that looks brilliant unfortunately there's no glass here so we're just going to ignore that and uh i'm right here as well absolutely stunning machine <laughs> love it and we're going to get a super long sunset here because we're flying to the west all right so dropping a bit below 12,000 and it's just that's because i wasn't paying attention let's get ourselves trimmed out uh, at 12,000 so i'm just going to give this a little notch up and uh, see if we can get ourselves uh, centered on 12. And then we're going to go to cruise power and we're going to switch our fuel tanks over to the alternate fuel tanks. Need some aviator sunglasses. Yes, I do, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Okay, here we go. There we go, that's bang on 12. Bang on 12,000, well, it's just dropped back a little bit, but I think we're good now. And I'm gonna try putting the altitude hold back on maybe in a short while, um, maybe once it's stabilized a bit. Uh, it's descending us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, very, very weird. Try it one more time. Very weird. Yeah, it's very. What is it doing? It's just bouncing up and down. It should not do that. All right, let's uh, turn off the seatbelt signs anyway. We should have done that a while ago. And we're going to stop worrying about that. We're just going to leave it because it just seems to be wanting to do its own thing. We're just going to ignore that. And uh, we are going to go to cruise power. So let's... Set cruise power, please. Set cruise power. Let's get the flight engineer to set cruise power, which is going to pull back here for us. Going back to I think 30, 32 inches of manifold pressure there, and uh, what are we on on the RPMs here? We're on about 22,000, 22.5,000. Oh, okay. Manifold pressure just went up there. gonna lie I wasn't not entirely sure what he just did there but nevertheless we're looking fine and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is now that we're in cruise power we might be able to get it to level off at 12,000 a little bit more reliably so let's just give it a slight descent <laughs> this is just it's just irking me that we can't get on bang on 12.
Anyway, in the back here we've got 98% uh, satisfaction going on, which is very nice to see. Can't go wrong. Everybody's living life. This was it. Uh, just to give you an idea, this I'm not sure what's going on with self-loaded cargo, but this was at like this was less than 10% when we set off. It was like 4% or something. Wi-Fi is good apparently. <laughs> this aircraft has Wi-Fi. Okay, so we're just just slowly bringing ourselves down to 12,000 here. Slowly, slowly. And then hopefully uh, it doesn't do that weird ballooning thing. But, I mean, it probably will. I've not got too high hopes at this moment in time. In fact, I'm going to keep descending through. I'm going to lose about 100 and... I'm going to go to about 850. And then if I engage that and it balloons, then we'll go to about 12,000. <laughs> and then we'll sort the fuel tanks out. Well, assuming we've got fuel in the alternate tanks, actually, I'm not sure if we actually do on a uh, flight this length. Um, oh, no, we don't actually have any fuel in the alternate tank, so we don't actually need to do any fuel management. All the fuel tanks are, are at the same, same level, basically, so... I think we're okay in terms of uh, fuel there. I'm just going to actually check the manual on that one, because fuel management... I've only done very, very short flights in this so far, so I haven't really needed to do much fuel management. So if we have a look at the manual here, if I can find the fuel management section. This is super long manual, by the way, guys. Very, very comprehensive. And uh, yeah, very, very cool, actually. Lots of information in there. And I'm just trying to find the right page so I can share it with you guys. Okay, cool. So, I am just gonna bring up the, we're gonna try to do the level off now, and then we are gonna have a quick look. Okay, so there we go, at about 850. Let's try the altitude hold again. Like, it does this little... Look at the vertical speed right now. I'm really not sure why it's doing that. It's, it's not done that at all in any of my other flights. Still climbing a little bit. Very weird. Anyway, it's closer to 12 than what it was before, so <laughs> we're just going to take it at this point. I think I might have done something that's messed with something in the plane, hence why the window is like inverted. Let's check the cabin pressure situation up here. So, um, uh, the cabin rate is at zero, which is fine. Uh, the actual pressure itself is at what feet? It is at 1,000 and, oh God. I always forget how to read this one. 1,002, uh, yeah, it's about 12,000 feet, the pressure. Okay, so that's a bit too much, right? I don't know. I, I actually don't know what the um, pressure situation should look like at this altitude. I've not really paid any attention to this as of, at the moment. Yep, 
Yeah, I feel like it shouldn't be that high though. I think that's quite high. Interesting. Wi-Fi service back then was the person who could talk the loudest and the longest. <laughs> I imagine, yeah, I imagine it was. Okay, so... Altitude control is now doing its job, and we're just a little bit above 12, but that's fine. Um, I think we're looking good now, to be honest. And um, we're right on track, just passing over uh, towards, well, further into Denmark now. Looking good, and then we're going to come up to the south coast of Norway, just up here. And it's going to be looking looking very, very sweet. So I think we're going to, to be honest, I think we're going to have this perpetual sunset for like the whole flight, which is what we've had so far, more or less, which is just brilliant. That's kind of what I wanted. Look at that. It's just, just beautiful. things. Brilliant. Just brilliant. It sounds so nice as well. It sounds brilliant. I, I love it. I love it. Even though it's, you know, we've had a few quirks today. You know, like I said, I haven't really experienced too many quirks, at least with the altitude hold. Um, there have been a few weird things with the um, capturing an ILS but I did manage to get it to work on uh, well last night so hopefully we shouldn't have too many issues with that today um, but we're looking we're looking pretty good I think we're looking pretty good so we've got a uh, we've got 16,000 pounds of fuel in each tank the first main tank actually has a little bit less by the looks of things I wonder what the procedure for that is. I wonder if the procedure is to um, to get them to all be completely equal. I mean, I feel like it would be. We, we could try doing that. I, <laughs> I might completely fuck things up, but I mean, we could try for science. Just to see. Just to see, because we could uh, we could turn this fuel tank off and put on put our cross feed on for these two. So then uh, engine one and two will be fed from this main tank here, and then wait until these all run down to 15, and then turn this tank back on. We could try that. I'm not sure why engine one is 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 got the least amount of fuel in, because they were all loaded equally. Engine one was the third engine that we started, so it's not like that one has been running for longer or anything. Although having said that, the fuel flow is showing up here is just a little bit higher on engine one. I'm not sure why that would be. Um, all the other indications are looking, you know, they're basically the same on, on um, all the other engines, so manifold pressure, RPM is all the same on all four engines. Uh, let's see, we've got the oil temperature, carb air temperature. I mean, everything else is, is identical on all engines. So, oh, actually, no, we've got a bit of a temperature difference here between three and four. Only very slightly, though. I don't think that's too much to worry about. It's still in the green. Yeah, so that's a bit mystifying, actually. I'm not 100% sure why uh, why that would be. But 
I'll tell you what I'm going to do is, just for science, I'm going to switch the first engine oil tank. I'm going to turn it off for science just to see if we can uh, if we can do it. This might all end very badly, but we can try it. All right, so what are we going to do to do that? So we are going... Uh, oh, let me see if I can remember this. Do we need to put the mixtures on high? I can't remember if we do or not. Let's see down here. These should be on... They're on lean at the moment. I don't think you need to put the mixture on rich to uh, switch the fuel tanks. I'm pretty sure you don't. All I believe you need to do is turn on the main fuel booster pump for the tank you want to switch to which is going to be two in this case and then the tank we're going to turn off is going to be tank one uh, which we will also put to low and then <laughs> then we're going to jump back down here let's just make sure everything is looking hunky dory make sure we've got fuel flow on both engines and fuel pressure so that's looking fine then what we're going to do is we're going to turn the cross feed, left hand cross feed, engine one and two, it's very very small writing but it says engine one and two is this first notch, so we're going to do that, boom, and then we are going to put this to off which is all the way to the bottom here, you can see main on. Uh, alt on and then off at the bottom here. So we're gonna go Actually, I, I'm just gonna check my indications here. Everything else is still looking good. I'm very nervous about this <laughs> Fuel flow is still looking good fuel pressure is still looking good Now that should mean that we're now only getting fed fuel from three, four, and five, uh, two, three, and four tanks. So if we jump over heads, just having a look to see here. There doesn't seem to be any any indication that, that tells you if a specific tank is actually feeding fuel. It just tells you the, the fuel flow into the engine itself. Which is surprising considering how many freaking dials there are here. <laughs> um, Anti-ice is there. This is cabin pressure. This is electric stuff. And then the final thing to do is just to turn the boost pumps off. And we're looking good. All right. Beautiful. So we should now be running on just purely these three tanks. And we're just going to do that for a very short amount of time to see if we can even the fuel quantities up a bit. So as you can see, this one is just slightly below 15. We want to run these three down so they're just slightly below 15,000. And I mean, it might not make a difference long term because at the end of the day, we still seem to be stuck with the slightly higher fuel flow on, on engine one. Again, I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, I wish I knew, but I don't. So that's that. Now, in a flight where you had more fuel, let's just have a peek outside here. Oh, look at this. This is just brilliant. Just flying above the clouds here at 12,000 feet. Little booby clouds. Can we see Mariner behind us? That is the question. We cannot. If we bring up the, uh, the VFR map, can we see Mariner? We cannot. Mariner, are you there? Am I still on V pilot? Yeah, I'm still on V pilot. Let's have a look on Volanta. Oh, Volanta is a bit weird. No map going up. Let's reopen that. Oh 
No, I see him on the lantern, he's behind us. Now, we are a little bit off the predicted flight plan, I think. But we're going to come to that in a moment. Let's just do a quick look at the manual here, so because I, I, I said I'd show you guys this. So I know you guys really wanted to see this, <laughs> but basically in a longer flight where you have more fuel, this is basically your flow. So in your climb, you're running on the main tanks here. That's what these four green dots are. That's basically your main tanks. And then what you would want to do is once you have leveled off, you would then switch to your alternate tanks here, which is right here. And it's kind of a similar process to what I just did there to switch the cross feed on, but um, you would instead switch to your alternate tanks on all engines rather than turning one off and the cross feed on. Then what you would do is you would run all the tanks down. Um, so engine the tank one and tank four is smaller than two and three. So when tanks one and four, just before they get empty, you would then want to turn the cross feed on for one and two and three and four. And then you would then uh, just feed all four engines from the middle two tanks. And then you would either once these middle two tanks get towards being empty, you would then switch back to all your main tanks. Or if you reach the descent, top of descent, you would then uh, switch back to all four main tanks. And that's it, really. You've got to manage your fuel in this thing. And another thing I wanted to show you guys is if we go over to Sim Toolkit here, if we, well, Navigraph, you can see here, this is our current position. We should be on this line here, which is the airway. Now, you may remember back to the start of the stream, it wouldn't let me put airways into the GNS. And this is a result of that, probably. Now, there probably is a way to put it in, but again, I'm not. <laughs> I don't actually know how to do that at the moment. I'm sure I could work it out, but I didn't want to spend forever putting in a flight plan into a GPS. So we're just going to continue on here and it's not going to be too much of an issue because uh, if we switch over to Volanta here and zoom out you can see that this, this shows VATSIM coverage as you can see there's a controller on down here, tons of controllers on in the US but uh, as you can see it's very very quiet over here in the Scandinavian region so we don't need to worry too much and if we look at Mariner here, this is Mariner behind us, he's actually flying on the airway so i Either, either the default GNS430 doesn't um, support airways um, or he's managed to figure out a way to do it but Mariner is using the modded version of the GNS430 so that might have a few more features than what this one does because uh, this is just default base level Asobo GNS430 there is a mod that adds in a bit more um, you know, a bit more uh, features and, and whatnot and makes it more, you know, like the real thing. So, um, so yeah. Might just have a quick browse, see if we can get the next leg um, set up with a airway. But um, I'm not going to go too crazy because I don't want to just destroy the fly plan, which is quite possible on this thing. So, I think on the, the other Garmin devices, if you click the menu, you can add in a, an airway, um, but it doesn't seem to allow you to do it on this one. Mm, yeah, I mean, I can't really see anywhere else where you would do it, to be honest. So we're just going to leave it as it is, and uh, we're going to crack on. Onwards we go. So you can see our ground speed here is only 250 knots. It's quite a slow bird. Uh, if we come down here, we can see our uh, airspeed is in fact 210 knots. So we must have a, a fairly decent cross, uh, fairly decent tailwind actually about 40 knots which is quite nice so uh, yeah I like that I like that 
Hey Mariner, welcome back to the chat. Yeah, it's going good mate, except um, I couldn't work out a way to put in airways on that GNS. So if I show you here, I don't know if you can still hear me, but if you look at where you're flying, you're flying right on the airway there and I'm flying a little bit to the side of it. Because <laughs> uh, essentially I think it's just going direct to the next fix. Now, I don't know if it's, I need to have the uh, the mod installed to do airways, but I just couldn't work out how to do it. But other than that, it is going, you know, pretty, pretty good. Uh, my flight plan's a bit messed up here. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, let's just fix that. All right, back into the deck, the flight deck. And oh, this is just brilliant. We've got this like eternal sunset going on. It's so brilliant. I wish we could use live time. You know, I really wish we could because um, that'd be so cool to see. This is live time. I mean, it's still quite light, but it's, it's just not what we wanted, really. We kind of wanted... We will set it back to where we were just at, which was about 10 o'clock, just, uh, just after. So, there we go. So this is showing the local time. I believe you can switch to Zulu as well. There we go, Zulu time, five past eight. Which uh, obviously isn't correct to the real Zulu time because we're using an amended time in sim. But, uh, Ah, you're loaded in via the world map. I see. Got you, got you, got you. Hmm, strange. All right. Let's just cruise on here anyway. And uh, yeah, I'm going to jump into Mariner's Discord here and just see, see what he's saying. Because uh, me and him both more or less got this aircraft at the same time. So we're both kind of learning it together. So it's very... Uh, very interesting to kind of hear what other, you know, um, bumps in the road other people run into, if you like. So I will just jump into his Discord. I need permission. Um, the, that voice channel is locked. I don't know if you can still hear me, Mariner, but the, um, the voice channel there is, uh, I can't join it. Right, let's have a look around in the flight deck then, guys. Let's see what we've got. So, we've got a nice little jump seat here. And for some reason, if you, like, right-click on it and, like, move the camera, it seems to do that, which is a bit weird. But, nevertheless, absolutely fine. Look at this. Oh. Look at the sun on here. All right. I've jumped into Hangout then. I just heard another sound there. It's quite unnerving when I hear these little sounds when I'm moving the camera around because I know there's such click spots like this that can activate on the right click. So hopefully I'm not accidentally pressing stuff. Let me just set my push to talk in this one as well so I don't start laughing. Right, there we go. <laughs> right, cool. All right, guys. So, anyone got any questions anyway about this aircraft? Anything you want to know? Anything you want me to show you? What I'm intrigued for is I do have. Um, hang on, let me just. Output. What I'm intrigued to know, I know we had this issue with the window, right? So I know I've got I've got aircraft damage turned off, so hopefully this this shouldn't result in any in fact no I'm not I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just not gonna do it. 
Um, let's see here. So engine stress, uh, you can basically break these engines. Um, I have all this stuff turned off at the moment, so you can see everything's just nicely in the green. Um, or I'm just really good at operating this aircraft. <laughs> everything's in the green here as well. You can see all the hours here. So if you look at the uh, each engine, so each engine has um, a certain amount of hours that it takes into account here. So it will get into disrepair. Um, you've got prop hours as well, so you can both repair and service both prop and engine. So they're both sort of different. I'm not sure what scenario where you would not service them both at the same time, but that does exist. You've also got uh, engine oil quantity, so that does run down over time, which you can top up here. It also counts your total airframe hours, which is very cool. I've got 5.28 hours on this thing already. Uh, you've got your anti-ice fluid, auxiliary oil, and water and alcohol quantity. These are all, um, you know, perishables or consumables, if you like. Top them up all on here as well. And then, like I said, engine stress. And then if you go to your options here, you've got some realism options. I've got these all turned off now at the moment, just because I'm still learning the aircraft. Um, to be honest, before I start having these on, I kind of want to, I just want to, you know, get a bit more comfortable with doing the full procedure myself. And then, you know, it just allows me to understand a bit better uh, certain aspects of this aircraft. Because it is quite a bit different to your average aircraft that we've flown here, especially on stream. And um, this reminds me about the freaking uh, fuel tanks. I haven't been paying attention. So uh, we're on 14,000 on these three. This one is now on. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I've messed it up, guys. I've messed it up. I've messed it up. <laughs> I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's still not terribly out of balance, but it's definitely not what I wanted. So... Um, I believe we can we can cross feed to all engines so that could be an option <laughs> I don't know if I want to continue try to level it out though to be honest because it's just gonna be I mean this has got slightly more in than these two this has got slightly less than these two so mm, I mean I guess these both weigh the same now but um, I suppose it's still a little bit out of balance, isn't it? Uh, so how would I do this then? So I would cross-feed all engines from this tank, remove uh, 1,000 uh, pounds, 2,000 pounds from here, and then I would cross-feed all engines from these two and get these down to 30,000. Oh my God, what a procedure. Now, I don't really know much about the all-engine crossfeed, so I might just have to just check that in the manual real quick. So let me just have a quick look here. Okay, so it's relatively straightforward to do. Hey, Raider Pig, how you doing? Welcome to the chat, brother. Hope you're well. Yeah, it's 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 definitely worth it. It's absolutely brilliant. 
brilliant aircraft. I've had so much fun with it so far, and I would, I would recommend it to anyone. It's just, it's just brilliant. I just love it. It's great. It's just, it's beautiful. Just look at that. <laughs> Look at the sunset, it's absolutely obscene. In fact, uh, before we mess around with the fuel tanks, let's just uh, let's just get ourselves a tasty screenshot here. This, this is just too good to pass up. Let's see if we can get a nice bit of a reflection off one of the windows there. No, okay, it's very, it's, oh my god, I, I'm looking for that reflection that I just see when I pan across like that. Should be somewhere around here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> How's it going, dude? No, then, mate. Just one second. All right, that reflection is uh, it's a bit much now, isn't it? Maybe we go like this. Okay, that's not not my favourite shot in the world. Let's try again. I love how the sun just reflects off the propellers like this, like when you come around. Look at that, that just looks brilliant. I think we go for a bit of... I mean, the only issue with that is it means the sun's like right behind you, so it's not the most flattering light in the world. Look at the moon up there. Maybe we go for the, getting the moon in the shot. That's pretty dope. I quite, I quite like that actually. Let's get it centered up. I've not actually done a shot like that with the moon in before, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> let's, uh, let's focus it up. There we go. Boom. Probably don't even need. Uh, let's just do it. Beauty. All right, let's get one more. Let's see if we can get one with this nice, these nice puffy clouds in. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of a cheat here. I'm just gonna wind the uh, sun up a little bit so that we get this nice um, sun cast across the clouds here. And let's see here. So let's get a bit of... Rasmus, welcome to the chat. How many liveries? That's a good question, actually. There's, there's uh, quite a few, actually. Maybe about... Um, I'll check for you in a sec. I'll check for you in a sec. I think somewhere around here is going to do it quite well. Yeah, I quite like that. That's quite nice. Maybe we go for a little bit of a... Uh, How you getting on, Bobby? All right, mate? A little bit of this. There we go. All right. Hang on, let me see if I push the torch. Yo. How's yeah. it going, dude? All right. Yeah, I'm doing doing all right, mate. Thanks. Yeah. What about you? Just sort of uh, planning descent, but yeah, it's it's going on good, man. Nice, man. Nice. But yeah, I I couldn't I couldn't work out. Put the airways in into this GNS. I wonder if it's like a mod thing. Oh no, wait, you um, you did the uh, world map, didn't you? Yeah, I completely forgot to put it in like that. I, I regret that. <laughs> yeah, well, I was watching your stream and I know when you said, oh, I forgot to do it, I'll just do it by this. I thought, I'm just going to quickly go back to the world map and <laughs> put it in. That's a good call, Matt, mate. That's a good call. I also had a bit of a weird issue as well with the window. Like, I don't know if you saw that bit, but... So, like, the window, I don't know if you've seen it. I actually saw it on another stream, uh, on the Flying Fabio's stream, when he did the preview of it. 
there was a bug where he opened the window and it was like the sound was inverted so when the window was open um, it basically sounded like the window was closed and then when he closed the window it sounded like the window was open and then what that resulted in was when he took off um, like the pressure was too much or something for the aircraft and it basically just crashed the aircraft like I mean he obviously had uh, realistic damage on in Microsoft Flight Simulator so it just like black screened him and yeah, I had that happen. Bit weird. Um, so livery. No, I can't say I've had that happen. Um, I did have when I started my engines. I wasn't getting no animations, so like my props was the sound was going, but my props weren't spinning, and none of my switches was working in the cockpit. But um, that sorted itself out. I did have a glitch. You know the old. Uh, cockpit glitch where you go into the cockpit and the, the pilot's still there and there's no instruments. I had that glitch as well. Alright. Oh, that is weird. Interesting. <laughs> I also uh, had an issue with the altitude hold as well. Like Whenever I went to altitude hold it would like it would like balloon a bit and then carry on climbing for like another maybe like 200, 200 feet. Before settling down, did you um, did you fully level out before you did the altitude capture? Because I believe if you altitude capture while you're climbing or descending, it can give you a bit of a bounce. Um, I think that's a good point, actually. Maybe I, I think didn't. it's just it, as you altitude as you out hold, it sort of tries to trim it. You know, obviously trim out, and it'll sort of bounce up and down, sort. Of. Good point, yeah. I'm sure I did try that once. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But that's a good call. Although I don't think I did that on my other flights that I did the other day and it didn't quite react like this, but I don't know. I should think it'll react differently in different conditions, so I think. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Also, can I can I ask you a question? So if you go up to your pressurization, your cabin pressure. Uh, on the overhead on the right hand side in the little triangle corner corner bit. Uh, yeah, I'm there. What's your uh, cabin pressure saying? Like what? Um, yeah, what? How many feet is that? Is that the big big dial at the top? Uh, middle, far left. Uh, mine's saying uh, eleven nine. Mine's I think. Mine's actually dropped down. Mine's actually dropped down since. Okay, fair enough. That's about the same as me. I just wanted to check because I, I, I've never looked at this panel before, so I, d I just wanted to see whether that my window glitch is actually affecting the cabin pressure or not. Um, I don't think it is though, because yours is about the same. Mine's a little bit lower than yours, but. Cool, thanks, man. Um, all right, so liveries. Oh, um, I think for my uh, approach, I'm going to... I'm going to break oh, off Mike, at thank you. and probably go direct to, uh, to the end of the localizer and then probably try and get it from there. Octos. Uh, let me have a quick look at mine. Yeah, because I was looking at the charts and sort of from up no way you sort to of go move this map is a up and then you sort of come back on yourself. So oh. instead of doing that, a cut that bit out, now. break off at Octos, go for a probably three four two or three three yeah, probably be about three forty heading towards like the localizer. Oh yeah, I see what you mean, I see what you mean. Rather than going all the way up and then turning um and then coming in from like a 90 degree angle. Because another thing about my arrival is, for some reason it, it wouldn't, it didn't input the rest of the star after Ratug. So it's supposed to go Ratug and then three uh, Anna fixes beginning with BR and then Godded and then transition from Godded to the ILS, but it didn't put any of that in for me. So that might be a, a good call actually. I might, I might do that as well. 
In fact, I will just do that because I'm in front of you, aren't I? So, um, probably better if I also do the same. Yeah, so let me just get to the liveries. Um, yeah, I think mine's the, the same. After Rattog, I've got the there's, approach. Um, there's five here for the cargo variants. That's the DC-6A. So five so far, and then there is uh, quite a few on here. So two, four, six, eight, twelve. Twelve for the passenger variant, five for this. So 17 in total that it comes with, but on flightsim.to, I think there's already about six liveries on there, so... People are already starting to create liveries for it, which is nice. I'm also just going to turn the seatbelt signs on real quick because it's getting a little bit, a little bit bumpy here. Don't want to upset our very sensitive passengers. And uh, Mike, thank you very much. Yes, I do still have it open. I completely forgot. So let's see what our fuel quantity is looking like. This is looking, um, yeah, it's not not looking too good now, is it? Um, yeah <laughs> oh dear so i think we're gonna have to sort this out i think i'm gonna have to try and bite the bullet here so we're gonna put the fuel booster pumps on on all of the tanks here and what i'm then gonna do is hey rasmus thank you very much for the 90 stars dude much appreciated thank you very much that's very kind of you thank you thank you thank you all right, so we've got all the fuel booster pumps on then, and we are just going to jump down here now. Yeah, I think you'll be all right either way, um, whether you broke off or followed the uh, flight plan. Looking at the right. the VFR, VFR mapping game, it doesn't look like it'd be that bad. So I think it all right, depends right. on whether we need the extra distance um, to get down. Yeah. Yeah, I think it might be good. I'm going to give myself a little bit of leeway anyway. Uh, before leveling off I think I'm going to give myself about an extra 25 miles or something uh, for the level off so uh, yeah I think it should be fine but yeah I think I'll go I think I'll do that though I think I'll go I'll go Octos and then direct to the final uh, the initial fix for the ILS alright so let's get these fuel tanks sorted so yeah, I'm going to yeah sounds good to me dude I'm going to go to, uh, which order did I do this in last time? Yeah, so I'm going to go to crossfeed. Um, actually, now I'm going to turn this engine tank, I'm going to turn this tank back on first. That's the one with the most fuel in it. And then I'm going to put all engine crossfeed there. And then all engine crossfeed here. Let's just check everything looks good. Right, that's all looking good. <laughs> and then the moment of truth, we're going to turn these three off. Looking good. Looking good. Alright, so if we come up here now, we should see, we should start to see fuel draining out of this tank only. And we're going to drain this one down to 10. And then we are going to feed all tanks from these two. And I think the way you would set that up is basically just leave these two as they are and just turn these two back on. I think that's how you would do it. This is the left and right cross feed, so let me just bring it up manual again. So this, yeah, how does that actually work? Why is there two all engine cross feeds? That's interesting. That's confusing me a bit actually. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, when we get down to the correct amount of fuel on the, on this engine, on this main tank here, main tank one, uh, we're going to cross feed from these two 
So I think the I think the setup for that would be to have these two on crossfeed and this one on all engine crossfeed, I think. Oh, that is a question and a half. Do we have transfer pumps? No, no transfer pumps in this thing. You've just got to cross feed it. I mean, effectively what we're doing now is, well, yeah, we're not transferring it. There's no way to transfer it. Feeding all our engines off this one tank now, so it should run down relatively quickly, I imagine. Clouds are getting a bit thicker up here. Probably why we're getting a bit of turbulence, but it seems to have smoothed out, so I'm going to just uh, turn the seatbelt off again. Yeah, what me and Marin are saying is what we're going to do is once we get to Octos here, which is one of the waypoints on our arrival, uh, we're going to go direct from Octos to um, to our onto our ILS fix because it's quiet. There's no one around. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. Should be fine. And uh, I do need to work out my descent momentarily. Um, we're only going to need. Uh, 70 miles to descend is what I calculated earlier on. So, not too bad. And, um, yeah, I could do with just adding up my my waypoints on distance, because this thing, if you go into your flight plan here, it tells you your cumulative distance from from the start of your flight plan, it tells you your cumulative distance and then your distance in between waypoints, but it doesn't tell you your distance. Um, you can't, there's no way to easily just work out your distance to another fix. So I'm gonna just go through really and just add all these up. Add up these distances and just work out um, how much distance I have to go until I get, until I wanna level off basically. Lex, I'm not sure what you're talking about, dude. There's definitely no traffic. I can see it on my other screen. <laughs> uh, but thanks for the reminder, Mike. Uh, we're looking fine at the moment. It seems this second main tank is running down. Still. They're all in the right positions. This one is definitely losing fuel now. Oh no, sorry, what am I on about? This was already on 10, wasn't it? I'm smart. I love how they made it so some of the, the gauges are different in color as well. You can see like how they've been replaced over the years and slightly different fonts as well. Like If you look at all these, these are all obviously indicating the same thing, but they all look a bit different. <laughs> same, with, uh, same with these, especially here. See how this one's very, very brown and these these different different colours here. So yeah, very cool. Very very cool. We're getting bumped about a little bit by these we're surfing over the top of these clouds here. Could be an idea maybe to climb a bit. Uh, we're not losing fuel like insanely quickly out of this, so check on it every now and again. I'm gonna just nip away for a sec, guys. Have so you uh, seen the weather for Bergen? I haven't, mate. No, I'll. Uh, I'm just gonna be right back in one sec. Oh, 
Right, guys, yeah, I will be back in uh, in just a moment. I'm going to leave you with... There, that, that's quite nice. Right, all right. We're back. Ooh. These clouds are, uh, cloud there ceiling's getting a bit higher, isn't it? All right, so our fuel's saying, uh, fuel is coming down there now on this tank, so that's looking good. Now, I just need to still work out how the, how I'm gonna, um, oh, definitely going through some clouds here. What temperature is it outside? Zero degrees. So yeah, I'm gonna actually put the uh, the anti-ice on. So we are going to put the airfoil heater mask to switch on. The cabin heater is already on. The prop de-icer will come on as well. And there is another panel up here. So this is the uh, windshield heater, and we are. This is really easy. This one, you just choose the temperature that you're at. We're just below, below zero, so below zero and minus forty. So we'll turn it to that. Hopefully we should be good. Getting a little bit bumpy. Let's just uh, turn the old seat belts on here. I always forget which uh, key bind it is for up here. There we go. Right then guys, so let's see if we can work out now how I can um, use fuel from just these two tanks for all engines. diagrams here to even work out
all right we're approaching 10 anyway so we need to think about getting that sorted so uh let's just go for it i've got all the booster pumps still on i completely forgot to turn those off i am a noob um so let's try it so this one i think goes um let's first turn this one on and this one on and then if we turn this one off that should do it I think and I, I, I think as well we could turn off this cross feed I think but I'm not sure on that one or we could turn off this left cross feed here because this one is um, these two engines aren't supplying any any um, sorry this no, I think that's fine, isn't it? What's the chat saying? Uh, right cross feed and three and four open, one and two closed. Yeah, but you see the, this right cross feed. I guess you mean right cross feed all engine rather than just the cross feed between the two, uh, obviously. Uh, I'm just a bit curious as to whether this cross feed needs to go into a different position but I, I don't know I mean I, I suppose it can't hurt having it on Let's see what we're looking like anyway so this is on 10 I think we're good I think we're good I think that's fine uh, let's just turn the booster pumps to off We'll leave it at that for now let's go up here and let's start to work out our distance to our destination so uh, we've got 5.2 miles to go until the bad app uh, we're getting rocked here in these clouds yo i'm back well uh, have you checked the weather in uh, in bergen Yeah, I've had a look, mate. Yeah, it's not too good. Is it not? Oh, dear. <laughs> According to what I've got, it's uh, light rain drizzle, uh, 7 knot wind from uh, 320 degrees, and it's a 300-foot ceiling of cloud. Wow. Yeah, I'm looking at it now, yeah. Broken clouds at 300 foot. Rain and light rain and drizzle. The only good thing about it is probably about six and a quarter miles visibility. Yeah. Yeah. Mine says uh, visibility nine 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 nine. Yeah. Yeah, my mistake. It says six and a quarter plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Should be should be fun that. <laughs> I'm just hoping I can get control of my throttles. If I can get control of my throttles, I think I'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. I hope uh, that works okay for me as well. <laughs> Okay, so right, I think I'm going to start coming down to about 9,000 now. Right, sound. I'm just working out my distances here. It's uh, a bit tedious to work it out on this little GPS, isn't it? So, our level off, we want to be at 3,000 uh, before. I'm getting a little bit of turbulence, though. So. Yeah, I'm getting bumped by a lot. 25 miles before Idava, we want to be level. So uh, let's see. So Idava is here. Let's just see where we are currently. 22 miles to Octos. 
Right, so let's say 15 plus another 50. So let's say we want to... Oh no, this is... What is this? ENBR 13 miles. That's confusing. Um, okay, so 15 plus 5, 20, 25. Okay, so BR 735 is where we want to be level. And then... So we want to start our descent uh, about 45 miles before that. So BN 735 is 9, And then another 22 miles to Octos. 33, 43. So about 10 miles before Octos, we need to start our descent, uh, which is about now. Okay, cool. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to descend at cruise power currently. And uh, yeah, basically what we're just going to do is we're going to descend at 1,000 feet per minute. So that should give us uh, five miles per 1,000 feet, so let's just start with that. So altitude control off. We're going to trim ourselves forwards here. And probably a little bit aggressive on that trim forwards, but we want to bring ourselves to about 1,000 feet per minute here. There we go, and seatbelt signs are already on, so we're going to leave those on as we're going to be basically, you know, making our way through the clouds here. <laughs> I think what might be a good idea is just to tune in the um, VO, um, the ILS, so 110, uh, decimal 5 is the ILS, and we're going to hit that. Oh, that was already tuned. How convenient. Um, and then let's just uh, put in on our nav 2 frequency. I'm going to put in the VOR, which is at uh, at the airport, just to give us another indication of, of distance. So I'm going to put that on there, swap it into the in-use frequency, and then down here, we actually have this little DME indicator. So I'm going to put that to nav 2. And uh, there you go. So you can see we are, in fact, 61 miles under 61 miles from the airfield, so yeah, I think uh, my mass was a little bit off there, I think we might have started descending just a touch too late, uh, <laughs> but um, we should still be good, we should still be fine at that, because I allowed myself quite a bit of extra uh, leeway. Now we started descending at 11 miles from Octos. So, we've just passed, oh, it's switched over to the next waypoint already, okay. Yeah, <laughs> this thing, I'm definitely still getting used to it, uh, but 11 miles from Octos. We've already done about 10 miles, so we should have, um, we should have descended about 2,000 feet, which is about correct, and then once we reach our next fix, which is uh, Dipma. Uh, we should be uh, just over another 10 miles, so we should be at about just under 8,000 feet. Um, in fact, we should be at nine. Um, we should be at uh, 7,000 feet. All right, so let's jump up ahead. It's probably a good idea to put the landing lights on. Um, which are not here. We'll put those on as well, and these ones. This is the wing lights and the position lights. We'll put them on flash. I would have thought the en flight engineer would have put those on for takeoff, but he didn't. Emergency lights, I would have thought the no smoking ones would have been on. Although, to be fair, in this era where people use these aircraft, <laughs> they would have still, uh, they would have, um... oh, you can turn on that light down there, that's beautiful. Um, they would have um, 
they would have been able to smoke on board. Now, one thing I want to show you guys is quite cool on this one. If I put these uh, landing lights to the extend position, let's see if I can get a good camera for this. I think you should be able to see the landing lights drop down. I think that's it right there. If I put this to the extend. Oh my god, the... <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit cloudy. Oh, they've not extended. Oh, there we go. I didn't actually extend them. There we go. <laughs> right, there we go. You can see it extending out. But what I think is a cool little detail here is if I go back inside and I put them into the retract position, just for a second there and then stop it and put it back into the middle which is off you see how it's only ex retracted part of the way so it actually fully simulates like how you would how the switch would operate in real life which is really really cool actually so we can turn those on and you can see the light just coming through there i'm going to put this to the off position so that uh yeah they are fully extended now so we don't need that on and we're on the descent, so let's see. Uh, yeah, so at Dipamo, we should be approaching 7,000 feet. We're about 8,700 now, so two more miles to go. So we're looking pretty good on the profile. This is quite... Uh, <laughs> This is some, some weather right here. This is probably the worst weather I've flown this thing in. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get the flight engineer to put decent, uh, 26 inches, please. Put decent power inches. in. So it's going to sweat set this to 26 inches of manifold pressure. As you can see, the BMEP is dropping down. Manifold pressure, there we go. I think he leaves the RPM. Transition altitude here is 7,000, so we kind of want to go to sea level pressure now. Sea level pressure is 1005, so let's set that uh, right here. I'm just going to press B on the keyboard actually, because that will probably be, it gives a more accurate result. 1006 in sim. So that's fine. That actually lost us a bit of altitude there, so fine with me. Alright then guys, here we go. Full IMC conditions here. Go on climb power. We should start losing a bit more speed now. And uh, we're looking good. Oh no, the fuel tanks. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh. This one has lost more fuel than this one. That's interesting. Tell you what I'm going to do is because uh, things are starting to get a bit crazy now. I am literally just going to put all the tanks on, and then we'll turn the cross feed off. Because I mean they're not too far off now, I suppose, but that's fine. Like, I mean, this is on 11, that one's on 9. <laughs> I must have, yeah, I should have probably changed the cross feed, I guess, maybe. I don't really know. <laughs> I'll have to double check on that, but they're closer than what they were before at the very least. All right, passing through 5,000 feet now. Let's see where we are. Uh, so... Uh, Didmer to Latsi. Let's just check the leg distance. Uh, it's nine miles. Oh, Didmer to Latsi. 
Um, hmm. That's not making sense to me. Oh, it's because we've just passed through Legta, haven't we? Okay, and I forgot to do my direct, so that's probably going to be inconvenient now for Mariner. Let's see where he is. Oh, he's quite far behind. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a direct, and I'm going to direct myself to Idava. Let's go direct. Double check that is the right way, right? Because this thing is, is a bit weird to... We're going to go Idava. It's weird how you can't... Um... Hmm, I don't trust this. I don't trust it. Let's go back here, and then we'll go and scroll down here. If we go to Idava and click Menu, Activate Leg. Oh, where's it gone? I'm sure there was an activate leg there a second ago. Oh, it's greyed out. Okay. Let's just go... Activate approach? I'm sure there was an activate approach there as well. Let's use this one instead. Activate approach. Enter. That's done nothing for me. Okay. Um, we go then to, oh baby, these cameras. All right, let's put the gyro pilot then back to gyro pilot mode. So it's not following the GPS anymore. And we're about to reach 3000. So I am I'm gonna level us off just there. I'm gonna give us a bank to the left. What's that noise I can hear? I can hear a very strange noise. The engine just sort of spitting out fire now, so that's good. <laughs> right, and then in terms of um, my heading here, I mean, I'm probably a bit late to actually turn myself in. But what is that noise? Is it rain that I can hear? Oh, it is, yeah, I can see rain on the windscreen. <laughs> so I think that heading should probably be about here. The centre is off there. And we should be starting to lose a bit more speed now, which is good. We're going to keep us level at 3000 and we're going to intercept the ILS like this. So uh, we'll come back up to the um, this little device, GPS. <laughs> now it won't let me activate the approach for some reason. Maybe I just click here. It should say approach here, but it's not. Weird. We've got the right frequency tune for the ILS, though, 110 5 so we should be fine. We do have um, nav VLOC there as well. Let's just see if we've got a DME. Yes, we do. That's looking good. That's what we want to see. Uh, Claire, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Thank you very much for sharing the stream. So, uh, Salah Hoodin, thank you very much for sharing the stream also. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Did microphone's going haywire. Um, right, I could do with giving us a bit of a bank to the left here. Yeah. Definitely should have taken a little bit of an earlier turn here, but that's fine. We're going to be fine. 
There we go, we've got approach mode active now. Tell you what I might do, just for, to see if we can neaten this up a bit. I'm going to go back to localizer. Actually, no, we're not, no, we're not, no, we're not. We don't want to do that. This is back to GPS first. Then go to localizer. Now we should be coming back onto our intercept course. And I'm just going to leave it there. Oh dear, what is it doing? Oh dear, where is it going? Yeah, there's definitely some funkiness going on with this uh, <laughs> this GPS. Alright, we're going to go back to V-Lock anyway. And I'm just going to manually vector myself. That's fine. So we are at 170, 80, 80, 185 knots. So we could really do with losing a bit more speed. So I'm just going to deactivate the flight engineer and I'm going to put us to slightly lower power setting. So we're going to go for 90 BMEP there. Uh, actually, no, let's go a bit lower than that. Oop. Yeah. There we go. We'll go to 60 BMEP. Turn that to center. All right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. This is tough when you can't see out the window. <laughs> I'm having to just rely on this. Claire, thank you very much for the support. We should start to bleed off a bit more power. There we go. We're looking good now. And let's start to center ourselves. That's looking a bit better. <laughs> I'm so not used to how slow it takes to um, kind of... And it seems to do this wonky thing where it kind of, when you level it, it kind of goes back in the other direction. It's kind of worked in my favor here, but... There we go. All right, cool. So, what I'm gonna do is, I am just gonna disengage altitude control and just slowly bring myself down to 2,500. Uh, we've got 160 knots, so let's get the first stage of flaps in. We're also gonna, I'm gonna put the power back up a little bit here. Put it to 80 BMEP. Trying to keep an eye on where I am here in terms of heading. And then I'm going to get the engineer to run the in range checks. Fuel booster pumps. Thank God for the in flight. Uh, thank no. God for the flight engineer. <laughs> so Fuel useful. Mains on, cross feed off. Hydraulic bypass belt. Down. No smoking signs. On. In range checks complete. Okay, so we've got flaps 15. Uh, we're losing a bit more speed, which is good. And then we are going to go for flaps 20. Okay, so we're coming in to the localizer intercept here. How are we? Did I, did I read my else? Why are we climbing? That's not good. Why did that happen? Was it because I added power maybe? These needles are not moving at all. Okay, there we go. I'm going to put it on approach mode. Okay, 
Okay, that's not good at all. It's just completely ignored the localizer. That's not fun at all. Oh, great. Uh, let's put it back to gyro pilots. Come on. Let's give it a swing round. We're still descending. That's fine. Uh, we're going to level off at 2,500. Wow. We can see out the window though now, which is brilliant. Shame we can't really spend too much time looking there. We're back up at 160 knots now. Okay, approaching 2,500. Slow down this rate of turn here. We still want to turn a bit. Let's level off here. Okay, let's go localizer. I'm just going to do this because this is a trick that they said to do and it doesn't work. And then the glide slope is coming down so we go to approach mode as well. And it looks like it's turning me onto the localizer now which is nice. Let's go for the before landing checks. Okay, glide slope's coming down. Let's see if it actually starts descending. It is not. Fantastic. Alright, I guess I'm flying this manually then. So let's just do a bit of a turn here. Alright, <laughs> I'm flying this manually, boys. Let's go. Flaps 30. There's a runway all the way off to the left. Let's get the BMEP at 90. We're definitely way too high at the moment. We, we might be able to recover this. We're going to go for flaps full. Uh, we should be able to recover this. We're, we're kind of catching the glide slope up, up a little bit here. 5.2 miles to go. Speed is looking okay. Bergen traffic, Scandinavian 452, short final, 5 miles, ILS, uh, ILS 35. Bergen traffic. All right, so we're definitely descending at probably at a bit of a higher rate than probably what you would want in real good. life. But um, I think we're looking good. Yep, Gabriel, flaps 50 is set. And to be honest, I think I'm just going to leave flaps 50 in now because we've only got four miles. So we should be good. It's quite a nice plane to hand fly, really. It's very, very, it feels very, very stable. All right, glide slope's coming in. We've got one red at the moment. Localizer's coming in. Okay, gonna give it a blip of trim upwards. And there we go. Two reds, two reds, two whites. Looking very, very good indeed. That was very nicely recovered, I have to say. There are some quirks at the moment with the ILS capture. Like I said before, it's a bit weird. I'm not sure exactly what I did wrong there. I don't think I did necessarily anything wrong. 
three reds. Uh, I think we're right on the cusp of two two whites there. There we go. Looking good. Flip of trim. Got a little bit of wind from our left by the feel of it and well the meter as well. Three whites now. Wasn't paying attention, I was looking at the weather report. <laughs> Alright, here we go then guys. So short fight all. Get on that center line. go <laughs> we're down i think we had a little bounce there reverse that was not too bad though that was not too bad all right on the brakes yeah we're not gonna make that exit <laughs> Yeah, stunning approach that, wasn't it? I was just, I was so, con I was concentrated so much, I didn't even really have a chance to take it in. Completely forgot to record it as well. Idiot. Oh, guys, these, these were not displaying the whole flight. Nobody said anything. I didn't even realize this must have disconnected somehow. All right, there we go. After landing. Bergen traffic. Scandinavian 452, text the gate. Bergen traffic. After landing, checks complete. All right. That was a funky approach. Flaps are going up. This is a freeware scenery, by the way, guys. As you can see, looking pretty good. They've got a Vida Row hanger right there. We're going to taxi onto the main gates here. It wasn't too bad, actually, though. I think um, probably not the softest touchdown in the world, but not, not the worst. Considering all the faff we had with the capture of the ILS, like, I really don't know what's going on there, to be honest with you. That totally screwed me over. Alright, so we're going to taxi on to the end here. There's some uh, remote stands down here. How you getting on, mate? Uh, I came in a little bit too high, so I'm having to just uh, do a bit of a circle so I can lose some height. Fair play. I seem to fly straight through the localizer, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was in fact same route. Yeah, it did the same for me, actually. I mean, I could. My throttles worked fine, so no issues with that, but. But, um, yeah, it just flew straight through the localizer. Where am I going here? I can't see a thing. I'm also going a bit too quick. Let's just slow down. I wanted these stands. Maybe we go... We 
don't want one of the ones with a gate. Uh, we could go this one here. Look at this scenery though, this is free. Amazing. There's a 19 and 20. Okay, I still can go 19 here, do you? How did you guys find that then? Did you guys enjoy that? Did you enjoy watching me struggle there? <laughs> Look at this nose wheel cam, love it. Listen to the squeaky brakes as well. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even see this gate here. Okay, looks like we're parking at a gate. Doesn't really matter, I suppose, because the passenger door is actually here. Does the engineer turn the landing lights off? He does, what a legend. Still have the wing lights on, but it's not really an issue because they're not facing in towards the terminal. We're gonna stop there, that's definitely not where I should, not where I wanted to stop. The reverse is very um, not working that well. The other day when I used this it was really require hardly any power to go backwards now it's requiring like almost takeoff power just to move what's going on with my controls here oh my dc6 profiles Like stuck again. No movement. <laughs> it's stuck to the ground. This is what happened when we departed. Hang on, let's try this. Set parking brake, unset parking brake. The Dickens, come on. I don't know what's going on there. It's literally stuck to the ground. We'll just do that. We'll just cheat instead. Oh, baby! <laughs> right, let's set the parking brake anyway and get this thing shut down. Thankfully, we've got the very handy par um, parking checklist. Right, and for some slew magic, uh, I, I just used the uh, the pushback, the invisible tug. I don't understand why it was, keeps getting stuck like that. It's very weird. Okay, there we go guys. Here we are. You can see the flight engineer putting everything back to normal here. Um, let's see what the passengers said. Oh, apparently I didn't even register the landing on here. Ha. Huh. Interesting. Not firm enough. Yeah. 
All right, let's go over here then and go to ramp manager. Put a ground power unit on. We'll put on the wheel chocks. We'll put this tow bar and tractor in because uh, we kind of need him. Let's get the cargo holds open. We'll get the stairs in once the door's open. There we go. Everything's open. Beautiful stuff. Let's get the passengers deboarded. Seatbelts off. Let's just go up yonder. Got ground power there. Get a bit of ground power on. There we go, guys. There we go. Now, um, I was going to do another flight, but that took a hell of a lot longer than I thought it would do. And I'm interested to watch it back and see what I did, if anything, to that was um, preventing me from capturing the glide slope. Should I say the ILS? All right, we are the 33rd person to arrive at Bergen today. We've got Mariner it's still out there on the approach. Review my flight here on Volanta. See if Volanta gives me a more favorable touchdown speed. 193 feet per minute is the same. So yeah, I mean, not too bad really. I mean, less than 200 feet per minute is is pretty golden. D force is 1.67, so not not the greatest. This one, this score is scuffed because of the fact it didn't detect the landing rate and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean everything's a thumbs up, and we will we're later departing but early arriving, so that's fine. And um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to use self-loading cargo again until. The um, update comes out. Yes, it just seems to mess up every single time. All right, here we are. This is Mariner down here. See if we can watch him land. Let's see if we can find him even. So this is the runway. He is off to the side down here. Oh dear, it looks like he's having some issues with the localizer again by the looks of things, because this is the um this is the final approach fix here. He's off this way somewhere. See if we can see him. How nice was that approach though? I really didn't even look out the window. I just, uh, <laughs> look at that. Stunning. Okay, well, we're not going to see him through the clouds, I don't think. Yeah, we're going to take the drone to find him. <laughs> yeah, uh, also, yeah, it does have a neat little iPad. Pretty useful mainly for weight loading and stuff like that and the flight engineer all right here he is so he's coming in to intercept the localizer not looking good again i don't know how fast this updates though so he might actually be facing in a different direction now i don't know I'm surprised we can't see his lights in this darkness. Too many clouds, so it's it's gonna be difficult. I mean he's like super close actually, he's just off this little island here to the Yeah. He should be somewhere around here. Should be somewhere around here. Oh, can I hear him? 
Why is that just the sound of water? I think it's just the sound of water, unfortunately. Well, I, yeah, I'm still scratching my head a bit about the whole localizer thing. I really don't. Really don't understand that. I mean, thankfully, this thing is super, super nice to hand fly. Oh. Oh, there he is. Pollux, we missed his landing. But he's here. He's also got some stairs hanging out. That's probably uh, because I've got my stairs out as well. For some reason, it probably links those two up. But here he is. Uh, did I just land? Yeah, I landed a little while ago, yeah. Welcome to the chat, nevertheless, uh, Fuzzy Lumpkins. How am I able to view another DC-6? I created a... Um, <laughs> it looks like the tug's pulling him along. <laughs> uh, it lo I created a, a VMR file for VATSIM. We're on VATSIM currently. Um, so we've got the model match in there for another... Although it didn't render properly, like you can see the windows are missing there. And the sounds are a bit off and it kind of like I've got this attached to my aircraft I've got the stairs down and I've got this door open as well so it's kind of mirrored my setup on his which is again a bit strange but and the lights don't work by the looks of things but yeah nevertheless this is um, this is Mariner another streamer here on well, these uh, streams to Twitch and um, Facebook. Mariner Halley. Go give him a follow. Butter, mate. Far from it, but I tried. Yeah. Um, would it still not capture the uh, localizer? No, I never captured the localizer. But um, I found out that next to your throttles, there's um, a big red lever that says L on it. Well, that's throttle lock. I've noticed I couldn't use my throttles again, so I took it off the uh, f the uh, flight uh, engineer, and um, I see that, and I just clicked it, and it, it unlocked the throttles. Beautiful. Nice. I didn't have any issues with that, but um, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. There must be a part in the uh, process where the flight engineer will unlock the throttles. Um, Probably, yeah. Or when you disengage the flight engineer, automatically it should unlock them or something. I'm not too sure. Well, I managed to use the throttles, but there was no the, nothing with a localizer. I was literally well off course and then see the runway at the last minute because I had hardly any visibility as well yeah i ended up just flying it manually from what 2800 feet or something and it worked out okay but yeah i, I just don't understand why it wouldn't capture like i cycled through you know vlock and gps like a couple of times and it just wouldn't wouldn't have it yeah exactly the same here um like I said, I brought it down from probably around, around about the same, 2,500, something like that. Um, brought it down manually myself from there. Yeah, it's weird. I might I might post a clip to it in the forums and see if they can shed any light on what I'm doing wrong, if anything. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I might just start flying them manually from now on. It's probably easier. Wow, I've just noticed something on mine that um, possibly is why I've not been capturing the localizer. And that's in the pro program or process bit. There's an activate approach. Do you, I'm, I'm guessing you probably have to do that on every uh, ILS. Yeah, yeah, I have that. On mine, I pressed that multiple times and it didn't, it didn't do anything. Um, but if you have a look on your GPS, uh, when it gets to your approach phase, 
Uh, it actually changes from, in the bottom left, it says, um, just above where it says um, GPS or VLOC, it says approach. Well, it says approach for me now, um, but it automatically changed over to that, so I really don't know what the situation is with that because it wouldn't let me select it manually and it just seemed to go onto it automatically, but it still didn't work, it still didn't do anything, so I don't know. Is this available in the market? Yeah, that possibly could be no, uh, why I didn't capture them because I didn't um, activate my approach. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I got it to work yesterday one time, but every other time <laughs> it's not. It's uh, it's a bit weird, a bit buggy, I think. Second traffic, um, KLM 100 taxi stand 26 via Chile and whiskey. Second traffic. Going in for 26. Have you got the freeway for this airport? Uh, yeah, I've got the freeway, yeah. Pretty good, isn't it? It is pretty good, to be fair, yeah. Yeah, I looked at pictures of the actual airport and it's um, it's bang on, pretty much. In the sim bugs, you must be joking. <laughs> yeah, mate, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous the amount of bugs with this. It's actually quite surprising that PMDG used the um, the default autopilot for this thing. Um, I would have thought they'd have at least put a little bit of their own sprinkle of, you know, PMDG-ness on it. But then again, the price of this aircraft was probably quite a bit less than what it normally is for them. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like... Um, this, I mean, it, it does say in the manuals. I'll bring the manuals up for you now. Um, if you go into this introduction section here... You've got this section that says things the beta team wanted you to know. And it says, right, uh, if I just go to the, where's the freaking zoom tool on this thing? If I just zoom in on here. It says, flying a GPS loaded ILS approach. When you have activated an approach on the GPS and switched to VLOC, which I did. Using the GPS's CDI button and you've switched to lock mode on the gyro pilot. This is all stuff I did. The autopilot will not follow the ILS signal. Okay, fine. The solution for this is to do a quick double tap of the CDI key on the GPS from VLOC to GPS and back to VLOC. This wakes up the autopilot GPS signal and gets it to track the localizer. This needs to be done when the ILS localizer needle starts to move. So that's almost them admitting that there is some kind of bug going on there, some weirdness. Um, but I did all that and I've tried that on multiple different scenarios and it just doesn't seem to work. Um, I have had it work once and I have also, I set up a completely separate scenario where I was just flying an approach. So I, I started the aircraft mid-air and it worked okay then, so I wonder if it's something to do with when you're transitioning from like a, an on-route flight plan to an approach. It's just a bit buggy. I don't know. But you guys saw, I went into this procedure here. I clicked activate approach. Enter. It, it didn't do anything. And you can also do it through this menu here as well. But I thought you could, but it doesn't appear like you can. Yeah, no, you can't. Um, but yeah, you do it for here then and activate approach. That didn't work, but it did switch automatic to, automatically to approach. You can see it's selected here. So approach was in, VLOC was in. I cycled it like that. The needle's shown down here. It did say VLOC GPS, which is what it should say. Um, if I... Well, it's not going to... I don't think it's going to say it now, BS. Let's see. Yeah, no, it's probably not going to come up now, BS, of the position, our position relative to the 
ILS. Although, you would have thought it would do, but... Anyway, it said it had the correct enunciations on here. You could see the localizer and the, the glide so it was showing on there. That's what I actually used for an assistance while I was flying the approach manually and it just it just didn't work. So I'm I'm a bit a bit confused by that, um to be honest. But nevertheless, it's still a pleasure to hand fly, so I am absolutely fine with flying them manually. It would just be nice to, you know, I don't like it when I can't work out why something isn't working properly. You know, I feel like I should be able to work that out. And, um, uh, let me see, I think I've left these on flashing, haven't I? But yeah, I, I don't like it when I, I can't, you know, work out a certain functionality, whether it's me or whether it's a bug. And in this case, because it's so ambiguous and I feel like I followed the instructions to a T, It's a bug, so there we go. Cascade, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well, good to see you. Welcome to the chat. Yeah, yeah, it's at least someone else had an issue. I mean, me and Mariner have both done multiple flights in this thing and Mariner hasn't got it to work once. I've got it to work once and I, I don't really know what I did different <laughs> to actually get it to work, but. Very weird. Seems like all the high level add-on aircraft that come with the sim have issues with the ILS, it's so weird. <laughs> Um, QWERTY, yeah, I mean, I would still 1000% recommend this aircraft, regardless of, you know, the complaints I'm making right now. <laughs> I still recommend this, you know, heavily, because it is a joy. It's an absolute joy to fly. It's so, so enjoyable. Um, but you just need to be prepared to um, fly and approach manually, and it's really not that difficult. It's really, really quite nice, actually. So what you would do is you set flaps 20 on approach. And uh, in fact, I can probably just show you it right here. In fact, if I bring up this, do, do, do. Okay, I'll put it in a different folder. Are you uh, doing another one, mate? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure yet. I'll let you know in a few minutes. Yeah, I might uh, might do one off stream. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think um, I think Mrs. has gone to bed now, so I might have to just pack it in. <laughs> that took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna. Yeah, same here. I thought it wouldn't be that long, but <laughs> it's a bit longer than we thought. I've seen it work, but I've not been able to. Yeah, yeah. Where am I from? I am from the UK. I'm from uh, uh, the north of the UK in Yorkshire. Um, but yeah, guys, I think I'm going to have to just call the stream there. Unfortunately, I would have liked to have done the second leg on this one. Maybe we'll do it in the next stream. Uh, we'll do another one potentially on... Uh, we'll do another stream on Tuesday, I think. And we'll take this one from... We'll take this from... From here to Tron time and carry on. So we'll remember our gate position, gate 20. And we'll take it from there. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to call it... It's... Um, 20 to 1 here in the UK and everybody in my house I believe has gone to bed so I kind of need to keep the volume down a bit now so I want to thank you guys very much for watching I, I feel like this yellowness on the nose wasn't there before I don't know <laughs> it just looks different but yeah like I say thank you very much guys for watching I appreciate every one of you thank you very much for the support uh, Rasmus, Mike, and Ramsey, thank you very much for the stars over on Facebook. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, evening, afternoon, 
wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye for now. Gabriel, pleasure as always. Fuzzy, thank you very much. Fuzzy Lumpkin, thank you very much for tuning in. Cascade Gaming as well, thank you very much. QWERTY, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, Ramsey, of course, thank you as always. Claire, thank you very much for your support today. Mike Byrne, of course, as always, thank you very much for your continued support and uh, your assistance in uh, reminding me about the fuel system. So thank you very much. <laughs> Lex, thank you very much for tuning in. Ray's Pig. Uh, thank you, dude. Cap Charles Johnson, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Breeze Wynn, Filthy Badger, Kevin, thank you very much for tuning in. Wayne, Bo, Damiana, Foot and Mouth, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Uh, Adam, Nicola, Raven Gaming, and uh, Steve, thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. I hope you all have a fantastic evening. Bye for now. I'll see you on Tuesday.